chat let's get started okay welcome to another healthy gamer gg stream my name is all kanoja just a reminder that although i'm a psychiatrist nothing we discussed on stre stream today is intended to be taken as medical advice everything is for educational or entertainment purposes only if you'll have a medical con or question please go see a licensed professional i've got something on my okay so be it gg chat if y'all have a medical concern or question, please go see a licensed professional. So today, y'all, we're going to be doing another viewer interview. I know we haven't done them in a little while, but super psyched. We're back to talking to people in our community. Um, part of this change has been because we are, uh, how can I say this? So since we've started making like standalone videos, um, it makes it easier for us to like do different things on stream. And so a lot of times for standalone videos, like they're great. Uh, they're, they're great when we do like lectures and stuff on stream. We'll still continue to do that. But like I, I basically like film on the weekend and stuff too now instead of just streaming everything. And that helps us sort of make a tighter, cleaner kind of lecture. Um, sometimes like I need to do it live because I need y'all to interact and we've got questions and stuff like that. It just depends. But since we're still making like a lot of different stuff that gets uploaded directly, um, we're streaming kind of separately and it, it, it's all cool. So we've got a viewer interview today. Awesome dude. We'll see what's going on in his life, but I imagine it may be in some ways similar to what's going on in y'all's lives. Uh, before we hop into that interview, um, we are, are we started doing memberships recently. That's been going awesome. So for those of y'all that are not aware, you know, we started doing memberships for people in the community who wanted to um, get more in depth on particular topics that we cover on stream and stuff like that. Part of the reason we did that instead of just doing it generally on stream is because the audience on stream like comes and goes. So the deeper that we go, the more people feel like left out 
or left behind or like they don't know what we're talking about. So we cover, it seems like mostly it's been spirituality stuff. So uh, we covered like uh, sort of advanced topics on karma. We're doing our part two of advanced detachment. And then the other cool thing is that the topics get decided by y'all. So what happens is we do voting a month in advance. Y'all decide what to what y'all want. And then I will do research and prepare lectures that depend on what y'all want. So for me, it's been a really fun experience because like basically we'll do like a couple of lectures and then people will say like, okay, this part of the lecture we really, really liked. Can you please do like an entire segment on this particular topic? So we're kind of going deeper into stuff. It's also fun for me because, um, you know, I get to go like I get to share more of what I've explored and stuff like that. So it's it's a lot of fun. If you all want to join us, we're more than welcome to have you. Um, and a couple of other things. So like, uh, you know, some people have expressed concerns around pricing and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, all everything is on there for VODs. So if you join now, you get to watch everything in the past and that's OK. Right. So we're really doing this to try to help people. And at the same time, making more content costs more money. So sometimes we charge for stuff. So, um, yeah, so we'll be uh, sourcing and voting on topics over this weekend. You can join at any point and then just join in on voting. If there's something that you all want me to cover, we can absolutely do that. So it's been a lot of fun. We've been sort of like learning together, growing together. And it's it's been a couple months and it's been a blast. So Strongly recommend y'all check it out. Okay, so we are going to talk today. Let me just hop into this call. And I got to fix a couple of things. Hello. Give me a second. No one, no one can see you yet. Okay. And I just realized I need to do this. Uh, can you count to 10 for me? One, two, okay, three. Okay, great. And then I just need to change your name because I forgot to do this. Nope, not that one. This one. Okay, so you're, what do you go by? Um, you can call me Jacob. Jacob. Okay. So did I get the spacing on that? Okay, that looks off-center. Scuffed. Give me a second, Jacob. One, two. Does that work? Maybe that works. Did we do it? Okay. All right. Jacob, do you mind shifting over just a touch? Like this one? Yes. Pro. Pro. Or and and count to 10 way. for me? No, no, right way. Count to 10 for me? Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. 6. Beautiful. Welcome, Jacob. Thank how you, you. How you doing, man? Very on edge. I'm very nervous. Okay. As we discussed earlier, you know, if it, if you feel nervous or you want to stop, we can stop at any point, bro. It's totally fine. Don't feel, you know, it's totally fine. Usually people, right. as we get into it, like the nervousness kind of melts away. But if it doesn't for you and you're, you know, not comfortable, it just bow out and just take the L I'm and sure move on. I'm sure it will. Okay. Um, and so what do you want to talk about today, Jacob? I have so much stuff on my mind, to be honest. Great. It's, it's difficult to know where to start. Yeah, just what's on your mind? Uh, okay. Um, recently, recently, I've been having uh, problems with uh, relationships with friends. Okay. And and like maybe romantic relationships, but that's always been kind of like an issue with me. Okay. Sounds so, rough, man. Yeah, um, I feel like I, I've i tried my best to maintain relationships or, like, get better at maintaining them and, like, reaching within myself to get to other people, like, friends, um, make sure they're doing okay. Because I feel like I used to be terrible at that. I would just kind of, like, not think about people or I would think about them but not worry about how they're doing. And I feel like to be a good friend, you should care about people around you but um i feel like it doesn't get returned okay yeah so i really struggle with um wondering like am i the problem but then i have to think about it and i'm like i really can't 
I don't think I can be. Maybe I am sometimes, but yeah. So J Jacob, you said you should care about the people around you. Do you care about the people around you? I mean, like sometimes I don't. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I just don't, and it makes me feel like a bad person. Okay. Because you kind of said reaching within yourself. So, like, I kind of got this yeah. idea of, like, you got to dig deep to be a good friend. Yeah. Yeah. And and sorry to, you know, call call attention to that. I, I you know, I, I think just we're, we're just being honest and paying attention, right? And and yeah. we'll, we'll get to the judgment later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but first, let's just map things out and try to understand where this is coming from. And, and so... Um, can you tell me a little bit about your relationships, like friendships? Um, what do they look like? I've had I've had a few. I'm I mean not totally a popular guy, honestly. Like school was tough. Um, I was bullied in middle school um, for being gay, even though I'm not gay. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah very confusing time of my life um <laughs> but i still had some friends who like stuck with me i had one that didn't um so that really sucked now that i think about it kind of like i try not to think about it too often because i feel like that's really something that like hurts when i think about losing a friend because you're just not cool enough or whatever um but i've had one friend since the third grade, although our relationship isn't exactly on the best footing. And then I've had a friend since I was like five, but we don't really talk anymore. Even though he lives nearby, he's probably like my closest friend, probably has cared about me the most, although I think he struggles with showing it too. And um, another friend that I met in high school when I moved and we still we still talk often but he got a new job so he's been busy so i've just kind of been like alone like i haven't really had any close friendships where i can just talk with people hang out play games or whatever so i'm noticing that a lot of these friends seem kind of like historic so we're talking about friends you've had a yeah. long time for a long time yeah what what's been hard what's what's been challenging about making connections with new people just have so much doubt and fear thinking about trying to reach out to someone and like just hang out with them and have a good time because I just like I feel like I'm not so sure about myself okay I guess I guess that's the way I would explain it and what are you unsure about yourself well I kind of I guess it kind of goes back to being the good friend thing or like if I'm just like a good person, even though like, I feel like, you know, I'm not a terrible person. I don't go around like shooting people and like stealing and whatever, drunk driving or anything like that. But like, then I think about like, I was thinking about like, if I'm not good enough, because I feel like a lot of people treat me like I'm not. And so I feel like that gives me a lot of doubt in like trying to make new relationships when you say a lot of people don't treat you like you're good enough, what does that mean? It's like, um, I feel like, so like I have a lot of people at work that I talk to and like joke around with. We have fun and I would consider like one of them to honestly kind of just be a, like a work friend, I guess. Like someone you only see at work, but they're like, they're just your friend basically. Um, and it's really, they treat me pretty well for the most part, but then I feel like I'm still not just, just not good enough. Like, it, I don't know. I just don't, maybe I'm asking for too much. I'm not sure. Yeah. So I, I want, let's notice something, right? So when, when you, so I, I want us to pay attention to something, which is, when you run into a problem, what is the reason for the problem, right? So, like, we just talked about this work situation, and then you ended yeah. up saying, maybe I'm just expecting too much or something like that. I don't remember exactly 
yeah what you said I think that's exactly what i said right so so like once again like it kind of comes back to you yeah like am i am i am i silly for expecting so much so let's just pay attention to that pattern and let's see sure what which other statements you make that kind of like end back on you yeah yeah um but so I'm still a little bit, a little bit confused. So, so you said a lot of people don't treat me like I'm good enough. Can you tell me what, can you paint me a picture of that? I feel like I used to not care so much about people. And I used to not, like I was failing in school and I didn't put all this effort into things. And so eventually, you know, I got older. And like, I'm, you know, getting close to 30. I'm like, I'm 27. So I feel like the more effort I put into things, the more disappointing things have become. And one of those things is relationships where I used to not care because it was kind of like my safe space where I could just avoid everything. And then I moved into trying. And then I still, I don't get what I've been trying for for so long. And so it makes me feel like there's something wrong with me. Yeah, I mean that sounds that sounds like let me just make sure I understand you, dude. So on the so you've got a couple of options, right? We can avoid, in which yeah. case nothing happens and we're not trying. Which is okay. Right. Nothing spent, nothing gained. Right. And then on the flip side, we have trying and disappointment, which means right. still nothing happens, but now a lot spent, nothing gained. And, and I'm also guessing that you're looking around and you see like other people and like other yeah. people try to make friends, but they get something. It seems so. And, and so I'm almost envisioning like there's like a variable, right? So there's like effort equals friendship, but effort plus whatever Jacob is equals not friendship or no result. So there must be some individual factor. Yeah. Is that how you Could see be. it? Is that make sense to you or resonate with you or yeah okay can you tell me what trying looks like well <laughs> i'm not so good at trying with the whole like hey do you want to hang out thing or like whatever i'm not very good at that at all but i try to make more effort into like asking people how they're doing like that's been a struggle for me because i just never really cared yeah i just didn't care which i feel like makes makes me a bad person but like, I don't, I don't know. I, um, I do care about people. Like I want people to be happy, but I'm terrible at showing it. And, um, how do you know you want people to be happy? Cause I don't want people to suffer. I don't want people to be upset. I don't want them. I don't want bad things to happen to them. I want sure. them to have good things in life. Let me ask a better question. Sure. Where do you care about people? Where within you does the not wanting bad things for other people come from? I don't know. It's just kind of like this inner fluctuation of like, I just want generally the world to be happy. I want, I want the people around me to be happy because I feel like happy people make for a better life. Like that's just how it is. Um, and I care about like my mom or like, my brother like i want them to be happy because that makes me happy okay so i'm noticing almost like a a difference in quality between the caring that you have for your mom and your brother and like the rest of us i Is mean it... that kind of makes sense because that's your family absolutely right yeah we're not saying anything's wrong we're just pointing let's understand where yeah. do you play games Is it... jacob um I've played so many video games in my life that used to be like my whole thing is like I don't know if I was addicted when I was younger but I definitely played a lot of video games. What are some um, of your favorites? I used to love Counter-Strike but now there's just cheaters in it. You can't even play the game. Rough. The man. whole like it used to be bad back then but now it's like every game's a cheater so Oh my god. You can't even play it anymore. But I have like over 2000 hours in that and then amateur yeah. <laughs> I feel like 2,000 hours is a lot Unless you're like, you know, the guy with 10,000 hours I, I feel like it is too But literally yesterday I was playing a game of Dota 2 With one of my friends And, I, you know, you're you're somewhat of a Valve enjoyer 
And so yeah. they were telling me that my account looks like a Smurf because I only have 357 wins. And they're <laughs> like, anyone under 500 wins looks like a Smurf. But I'm like, dude, I've been playing this game for 14 years and I have like a 40% win rate. And like, I'm not a Smurf. And he's like, yeah, I know, but it looks like it's a fake account. <laughs> so nice. Yeah. All right. So CSGO, yeah. what else? Um, I've played a lot of um, Call of Duty. Okay. Um, like Cog growing noob. up, Modern Warfare 2. Cod noob, yeah. I've played a lot of Battlefield too. Everyone was talking like back then, like Battlefield was the better game because it was the one you could fly vehicles or whatever. Which I kind of agree, but also Call of Duty has its own place. Okay, so um, if we if we look at FPS, you want to tell me more other games? Or is oh that... yeah, I've played so many. I played so many games like Terraria. Played the crap out of that. I've played strategy games. Okay. Um, play. I play Rocket League. I have like a thousand hours in that. Okay. Okay, yeah. so let's focus on FPS for just a second. Sure. So for phase one is like there's a map, right? So like I sometimes rarely make the mistake of playing an FPS game and I just get dumpstered, like dumpster, 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 because like you have to know the maps, right? Yeah. For Counter-Strike, that's really important. Uh, yeah. Or like Call of Duty. For, for me, it feels like I, I don't know, like people just show up like I'm I'm going to like walk down <laughs> this way and then like I just get shot from behind. I'm like, where did that guy come from? And I'm like, I'm going to yeah. sneak around these motherfuckers. And then I try to sneak around and pop. I get popped as I walk around a corner and I just don't know the maps, right? So Overwatch is probably the FPS I've played the most of recently, which yeah. is like years ago. Um, yeah. so, so for phase one, what we're going to do is we're just going to like learn the map. We're not going to judge. We're not going to say okay. something's good. Something is bad. We're just going to like try and understand what does a map look like. Okay. All right. So All right. you care more about your brother and your mom. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. Why? I don't know. I feel like I already said it. They're like, they're family. They're close to you. Like, what you makes someone kinda... close to you? Time spent, um, knowledge within the relationship, like just knowing each other. Okay. Like, um, just closeness. I feel like just always being there. Okay. Okay. So presence, knowing each yeah. other, time spent. Mm -hmm. What about these people at work? I mean, I spend time with them, but not outside of work. <laughs> so. I know I know my one coworker quite well, but yeah, she's not, you know, only known her for what, a year and a half maybe? Is that a long time so, or a little time? I feel like a year and a half is not a super long time, but it's long enough to get to know someone pretty well, I feel like. Do you know them well? I don't know everything about her, but I know quite a bit. Does she know you well? I feel like she knows me but not quite as well as I know her. Because I don't, I don't talk a lot about myself when it comes to certain things. I'm kind of closed off as a person. Okay. Why? I feel like that's a lot. Um... just trying to think of like where to start with that one reason may be because i don't like opening to people and then end up hurt or disappointed okay um i also feel like i just lost it there's another reason in there but it's gone now interesting yeah. So then let's just focus on the one that you came up with. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, so, uh, tell us about hurt and disappointment when you open up. Um, I feel like I try to talk to people about things and I feel like I'm, I just get told that I'm wrong all the time. Like people just doubt me can you give me um, an example not necessarily like maybe it's just that i can't accept it because i feel like at work sometimes i make a mistake or just do something a different way but then like it's the wrong way or something maybe it's not even the wrong way it's just not the way that somebody wanted me to do it or it's just a silly way to go about it 
Um, but this this idea of of opening up and being hurt and disappointed must have happened before work. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I feel like I can't really go in depth with like where that comes from because I just don't even know. How long have you felt that way? A long time. A long time. When you were a kid? Um, if I want me to be honest, I feel like that probably comes from, like, my family when I was a kid, yeah. Like, I remember, uh, just not being able to talk to my mom about stuff, and I still really don't. And one thing was, like, she went through my stuff one time and found this, like, notebook that I wrote in, where it was, like, just like depressing stuff because I was just sad and that kind of that really betrayed my trust and I feel like I just can't trust people with things like that so I guess that's kind of like I just feel like I just can't trust people ever since I was a kid so how old were you when this um when you were writing in this notebook I was probably like 10, maybe 12. Wow. It's a real violation of privacy. Yeah. And yeah. what, and you know, you don't have to, I know you didn't want to tell your mom and here we are no noting a violation of your privacy, but do you want to, do you feel comfortable telling us a little bit about like what you were going through at the time or what was so depressing about your life? You can say no and we can just work around it. Yeah. Yeah, I sh I'm trying to remember, to be honest. Um, remember, <laughs> it's just like ridiculous thinking about it. Like, honestly, it's kind of sad. Um, I was like fighting with my mom, I think. Not like fighting, fighting, but probably like yelling a little bit with my mom. And she told me that I have no life as a kid I was like 10 or 12 or whatever when I was writing in that book that stung I feel like as a kid and, and when you when she said you have no life like isn't like you're a loser like what do you mean Pretty by no much. life okay yeah and it's like man how could a kid be a loser <laughs> like and then I write in that book and then she like she found it and showed it to me or whatever and it's just like really like that's supposed to be for me trying to get away from telling that I, being told that i have no life as a kid so i'm i'm a bit confused so you you guys had the argument she tells you you've got no life and then you write in your diary or whatever yeah. and then she yeah, finds and then it she, and and yeah. what does she do when she shows it to you she did ask me if I genuinely like felt that way because I was like writing about how I was just I wrote that I wanted to kill myself I feel like that would have been a little dramatic like a little over over the top back then like I was just sad and depressed because of probably like a few other things too like maybe some other things built up I can't remember though but I just remember that moment where she told me that I have no life. And then I wrote in the book about how I was sad and like, I was like, maybe I should kill myself. And then she asked me if I really meant that. What did you say? Um, I thought about it for a second. I told her like, I was just venting, which I feel like is mostly true. I know it's, con I know it's weird. I don't know how to what? describe it though. I think you're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm not just saying that. I think it's it's actually like, I think we all know. Because, I mean, you said it's mostly true. Yeah. What about the other part? I have struggled with um, suicidal thoughts um, and depression for some periods of my life. It comes and goes. What's your understanding of why a 10-year-old 
would write something like that? What are they what are they looking for in suicide? Do you know? Now that I like really think about it, that's honestly like kind of messed up that I would write something like that as like 10 or 12. Um I think that I would either be I don't know, that's kind of like maybe cath- cathartic writing about it and getting it out to find some place to get it out. Maybe I was looking for some form of attention because I just felt like I wasn't being heard or seen. Um, although I feel like that might not be true because I wrote it in a book and then hit it. I well mean, done. it wasn't even really, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even really hidden. It was out in the open in a bookcase. It was like, it just looked like a book. Um, yeah. Yeah. So... I... No, go ahead. I, I wasn't sure what I was going to say. No, I mean, I, I think like, let's just like take a step back and just think about like, let's not, when you say kind of messed up, yeah. like, what does that mean? Like, I, I like agree, really it's kind of messed up. up, but, like, what in what direction are things messed up? Like, I'm confused. Like, what do you think is messed up about that like, situation? The fact that I would be, as, it like, 10 or 12 brought to that point where I would be writing in a book about being sad and depressed and my mom saying I have no life and then talking about killing myself. I think that's messed up because, like, a kid should not be doing that. I mean, not that I shouldn't have been doing that, but that, like... They shouldn't be brought to that point. They shouldn't be brought to that point. So I want you to once again pay attention to your language. Okay. Right? So you did it again where you said, I shouldn't be doing that. And then you said, a kid shouldn't be doing that. Right? Or a kid shouldn't be brought to that point. Yeah, I was just trying to like clarify because I feel like saying I shouldn't be doing that would be like saying I shouldn't be doing that. But I feel like overall it's okay for a kid to do that. But... The whole thing, the whole situation was kind of not good. It's not a good situation. It's not a good It's fucked up. Yeah. What's fucked up about it? Being sad and depressed or being pushed by other people or like kind of brought to that point. Like that's what I was saying is kind of a kid having nowhere else to go to the point where they write in a book about wanting to kill themselves. Yeah, I mean, I I think that makes a lot of sense. Like, in this, I agree with your assessment of fucked up. So, like, what I see when I see very young children who are express some amount of suicidal ideation or dialogue or whatever, um, you know, if we kind of look at it clinically, I think very few of them are, and we're not talking about you here because we don't really know, but, you know, if we look at it clinically, very few of them are actually have like an intent to end their life. So usually like if you look at a 10 year old, a 10 year old wants their current situation to end. Yeah. Right. They want, they want, they want the situation to be over. Yeah. And so oftentimes when we're looking at like really young people, what we see is that like, they don't know how to make it end. Yeah. Right. So like if life is this, like I don't have the ability to change my life. And so if I don't have the ability to change my life, like if the life, if I just went to sleep one day and I never woke up the next day, then like I would be free of this. Yeah. So oftentimes when we look at it clinically, it's really an expression of distress is is how I think about it. Right. It's like, it's like, I don't know how to get out of this and I don't like it. And, and yeah. And is that, does that track for you? Yeah. I feel like, that's probably a better way to put it than what I was trying to say. I was kind of trying to get to that point, but I didn't really know how to say it. What makes you think you didn't say that? I mean, I realize I use different I, words, I like, but yeah, I feel like you put it in a more like clear and concise way. Yeah. Well, I mean, sure. But I, I think <laughs> I, I knew what to say because of what you said. I, I thought you painted us a pretty vivid picture of like, oh, okay. mom calls you a loser. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You, like, write yeah. in your diary because you can't, like, talk to her about it. And then yeah. we haven't really scratched this yet, but we're just going to say it, right? And then my mom finds it, and then instead of, like, saying yes, you kind of treated me like shit, and you really hurt my feelings. You said I was venting, and it sounds like you absolved her of all responsibility. 
Yeah, I feel like as a kid, I shouldn't have done that, but I didn't know any better. Of course. Like, yeah. Right? So, so I, but it, like, I think it's like what I'm sort of noticing is like there's a lot of isolation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, so, um, like, I, sometimes I feel like I'm isolated and sometimes I self isolate. Well, yeah. I mean, because it's like if you, when you don't isolate, this is what happens. Yeah. Why, why the fuck would you not isolate? Right. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Yeah. So, so we were, I'd asked you this because I was asking about like examples of when you were hurt or disappointed for trying to maybe connect with other people. Beautiful example, by the way. Thank Any you. others come to your mind? I mean, sad, but. It's very sad. Yeah. I still think about it, of course, like. That much is clear. Pops in my head. Yeah. Just only, oh, like, but only when you don't avoid thinking about it, right? Sometimes you avoid thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, like, I'll think about it for a second, then just kind of, like, move on, mm -hmm. avoiding it. Yeah. Um, I feel like... Now, okay, so another example I could bring up is um, being bullied in high school. It wasn't terrible. Middle school was worse, because, like I said, I was called gay even though I wasn't gay, and I got made fun of it, fun of for it. And um, in high school, it kind of transitioned over a little bit. But so there's that one friend that I was talking about where he kind of went off to do his own thing with his, his friends that he found. Um, I tried hanging out with them in gym, but they obviously didn't like me, even though I kind of like, I just wanted to be with my friend, you know? I didn't really care about the other ones. Um, and. They weren't terribly mean to me, but I remember one day, um, this day fucking sucked because I got, I was just chilling, like just goofing off around, um, you know, like the mats you ever like have wrestling mats in a gym that you just lay them down. Yeah. So I was just like messing around in that. And then for some reason they just decided to spray me with Axe deodorant, like spray the crap out of me. And pissed me off so I, like i was ready to like fight someone and so i pushed the mat away and it fell over and then the fucking teacher yells at me and i'm trying to explain to the teacher i'm like they're spraying the shit out of me with axe spray and they're like we'll pick it up i'm like they fuck they can pick it up and i just got like even bullied by my teacher and then that day i think i was just so fucking sad because like it just felt like Nobody was on my side. And then just more isolation. That's rough, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's terrible because it, you know, schools, they don't care about who's guilty. Those no, they don't. They just kind of really do arbitrarily punish either the thing that you see that's going wrong. They don't, they really don't pay attention to the inciting behavior. Yeah. Right. There's no like investigation. They're not, they're not the bandwidth for it. I feel like it's hard to. You can't keep track of every single situation that happens. Yeah, it's it's challenging. And and yet you still get yelled at for being the victim of bullying, which is like a story, yeah. by the way, that I hear way too much of like, right. you know, someone getting pushed and pushed and pushed and you try to talk to people, you try to do something about it. And and what about your friend, though, when all this was going on? Wasn't my friend anymore. He found it funny. Either that or I just... Maybe I wasn't paying attention. Maybe he just didn't care so much because either he laughed or he just like walked away. He just didn't care. Yeah. Sounds I will like it... say though, um, um, that bullying that happened in middle school, I did end up excusing myself to go to the bathroom because I just needed to cry. So I went to the bathroom to cry. Um, and I was in there for like five, 10 minutes just crying. And then someone came in and found me and I was kind of like done crying, but they could tell anyway. Cause you know, like you yeah. guys get red and everything. So they, like I come back to the classroom, the teacher asked me what was going on and then sent me to the principal to talk about it. And I, I did end up getting like apologies and the bullying did stop. So I will say there was like a good thing that happened there where they, they forced people to stop. And some of those people, like one of the, one of those people, persons, one of those persons, I guess, became kind of like a little school friend. Like, we didn't hang out outside of school, but we did eventually, like, 
to become friendly with each other. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, there's hope in the world. Yeah. Every time, last time we experienced hope was middle school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm. I, I. I. I can see that. So it sounds like the bullying was more severe in middle school, but also that. Yeah. The resolution of it like gave you some hope. Yeah. Which, which is an interesting principle. It's not something that I've kind of thought about. Like, um, can I just think for a second? Yeah. So it kind of reminds me of, of this really fascinating study where, so you're saying that the bullying in middle school is worse, right? You got made fun of for being gay, even though you're not gay. Yeah. Um, and then, and then it kind of ended up well. So there's a really fascinating study. So even though it was like more severe, it seems like there's more resolution for you than, and whereas like you're dropping F-bombs when you're talking about this one incident in high school. Yeah. And, and so it's, there's a really fascinating experiment about, so that they had people put their hand in cold water. Okay. So like very, like uncomfortably cold water. So okay. like freezing water or even like well below freezing or something like that. Basically like not damaging, you're not going to get hypothermia. And so in, in one setting, maybe it's like negative 10 degrees, I don't know, Celsius, Fahrenheit or whatever, who knows. So in, in one, it's like, let's say it's just negative 10. And then it's in negative 10 for like 30 seconds. And in another scenario, it starts off at negative 20 and ends up at negative 15. So okay. even though it gets better over time, it is still objectively worse than the first scenario. But there's improvement. Mm. And what people basically uniformly do is they prefer the latter to the former. So even if things are objectively worse, but if they got better than where, when they started, people consider that to be less suffering than just static crappiness. Does that kind of make sense to you? Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. So it's interesting because I think about that experiment when I hear experiences like this, because you're saying like middle school, you're just tell us like kind of calmly, right? Middle school is way worse. Yeah. And and you talk about it with less emotion. So there's like more, I, I, I mean, I get the sense there was more resolution. Whereas like this high school thing is like, this is fucking betrayal, bro. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, um, they even wrote me like apology letters. And even though it seems kind of lame, I feel like it really helped like getting genuine apologies. And then like, yeah, high school, just nothing happened. I was just bullied. I would prefer, I think I would prefer that resolution over yeah. just being bullied and having nothing happen. Most humans do. Yeah. And, and what I'm kind of noticing is that not only was like the, the I mean, the, the other piece of the puzzle was that it sounds like these were friends of your friend and your friend didn't step in to stop it. Maybe even laughed yeah. along. Yeah. So like, I'm, I'm noticing a pattern of betrayal from people. Yeah, posting. I mean, that's, Honestly, that's got to hurt almost as much as just being bullied for, like, in the, the middle school bully. Because, like, betrayal. I mean, this guy was my friend. Like, he's been to my house. Like, we played video games, messed around, you know, told, like, told each other things, like, whatever friends do. And then just not having that friend anymore and him just stepping in to be part of the problem. Yeah, so... Sorry, I had this stupid comment in my head, which is why I'm grinning, and I'm trying to get it out of my head. What is it? Well, you said, like, messed around, and I was like, but not oh, in yeah. a gay way. <laughs> I thought about that, too. You know, I, was... thinking, I know, I saw yeah. you thinking. I was like, probably shouldn't have said it like that. I but... said... <laughs> we are all thinking it. Right? Yeah. But not in a gay way. <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> mind meld, bro. Okay, getting back to the issue at hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's so inappropriate, right? Like here we are talking about betrayal and, and you know, fucking yeah. feelings and, um, no, it's fine. It's funny. Uh, okay. So, so yeah, I mean, so it sounds like there's a couple of really important relationships in your life where you did feel hurt and disappointed. Yeah. So, I mean, I know this sounds kind of weird, but like, I mean, isn't it natural to like not open up to people then? Right. And I'm not saying yeah. you're saying it isn't unnatural, but. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. that sounds really tough. Like, you know, when you think about opening up to someone, what do you think is going to happen? Betrayal. Betrayal of trust. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. I mean, I'm sure there's a few others, but that's, like, what I think about every time 
I think about opening up to people. Because I can't trust them. Yeah, I mean, that's how... What are we going to do about that? I honestly, I really don't know. Because, like... That's the thing. is like, I think about how, like... I could be the problem sometimes. But then, like... Really, I'm just the culmination of the things that have happened in in the past and these things have pushed me to this point and it's like it might be a problem for me to deal with in life but not necessarily that I'm the problem and I just I don't know how to deal with getting away from that self-doubt while also moving towards like healthier like relationship practices where I can actually trust people so I'm confused about the self-doubt okay so so what what do you doubt about yourself well, it's kind of back to, like, the whole relationship thing, like, trying to be uh, more caring, like, a better person or something, because I feel like, I felt like I wasn't good enough, like, I was doubting myself, that I wasn't extending out enough. Well, wh why don't, like... why do you think you don't care about other people? not really sure to be honest what happens when you care about other people they betray me <laughs> <laughs> right so i mean kind of seems like logical to me it's yeah. like care it just almost sucks and get fucked like, bro yeah like <laughs> or and i mean you said at the very beginning it's like either you're avoidant or you try and you get burned yeah. So like it seems like it's a it's a like a solid protective strategy to like not yeah. care. Like it's not that you're broken, it's that like that's dumb. Yeah. Right? Does that what do you think about that? I feel like it's tough cuz it's like I kind of have to find a way to move past it without thinking about how like I might be broken or something and I have to just find, I don't know, just being okay with myself while also trying to, I don't know. It's tough. I really don't know, to be honest. I'm trying to Yeah. I mean, it something. sounds impossible. Yeah. I'm not saying it is impossible. I'm saying it sounds impossible. Right. right? Yeah. Like I, I don't, I mean, it seems like the crazy thing about this is that I, I, I don't think it's like, you're thinking about it wrong. I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense. Like, mom called you a loser, read your fucking diary, was like, is this true? Do you really feel this way? Do you remember what her, like, tone was when she a asked you about it? Yeah, I feel like that's important, too. Um, she, seemed, she seemed sad, which is a nice thing, because she should be sad. Like, Yeah. So I think she genuinely cared if i felt that way sounds like it yeah right and you said you're pretty close to her now like it sounds like you love her a lot i do i just feel like i just don't know how to show it and neither does she i think her from what i've heard her parents like my grandparents um mm -hmm. were pretty messed up um do you feel they... comfortable sharing some of that just Give us a quick... Yeah, I can I can talk about that. Um, drinking, a lot of drinking. Um, the kind of... It seemed like they didn't really care what happened to my mom. This is just all from my mom, and I kind of... I don't really see it in my grandpa, but I see it in my grandma. She seemed like... To be honest, like, I haven't talked to my grandma for a long time. It's been years, which I feel like is weird. Like, most people talk to their grandma or at least their grandma reaches out right my grandma doesn't reach out so i see it i understand like my mom talking about like just being mistreated in general i don't have specific stories but she's do you told us i mean it's fine if you don't share do you know specific stories i really don't um i think the most specific i can get is like my mom just going out and her not caring yeah, like so, my so mom just... yeah, so, okay. 
sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I, I, it's, it's fine. So it sounds like your your grandmother was like kind of mentally checked out. I guess. Right. So it doesn't care. Her beautiful grandson Jacob is turning twenty seven. Let's call this this sweet boy on his birthday. Just care. N- nothing like that. It seems like that's kind of like my whole family. Like my grandpa doesn't really reach out either. Don't I don't I've met my dad before, but I don't know. Him. Do you know how to care? About that's other people? the thing is I feel like I've had to figure it out by myself. And that's got to be extremely difficult. Like you, said, you should be taught that you should be taught that when like you're a kid, right? Like your your parents would show you how to care because they care for you. But when they what when they don't, then you don't learn that. You say that's got to be tough. Like you're speaking like a hypothetical. It is tough. It is. It's almost like I can't comprehend myself being in that situation, but I am in that situation. Weird. Right? Yeah. It's It's almost like like I'm in the third person. Yeah. How do you understand that? I don't. I don't. Okay. In the third person. I really don't understand that. We're going to help you. All right. (laughs) Can I think for a second? Of course. Use your Jedi mind tricks on me. Oh, we'll need none of those. You're you're doing all the heavy lifting yourself, bro. I figured I would. Okay, so let's see if we can kind of just make sure we're on the same page. Here's Jacob. Yeah. Jacob wants to be a good human being. Jacob yeah. strives to be a good human being. Jacob has been is inhabiting this body on this planet Earth, existing in 2024, and is trying to interact with the other humans. And and you find yourself like like, like it's hard to care, right? Like like you sort of recognize that like you should care and it's not like you're a bad person you you kind of you know you wish well on people like you want people to be happy like you want the humans to be happy but you have difficulty connecting with them there's uh, some trust stuff where like you know like you've been close to people before and even if things are like okay now like that comes with a lot of pain and it comes with a lot of uncertainty. And like when you kind of, it's, it's interesting to really say, like to hear you say, like I would rather go through the middle school thing again. And that makes perfect sense. I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? Because you don't want to get through, you don't want to, you never want to go through this whole thing of like, okay, I've got a friend and my friend fucking left me on the ground covered in Axe body spray. And like, they could have said, like they could have even said like, it, you know, fine if they laughed or whatever. But when the teacher's like, hey, Jacob, your fault. He could have said, actually, teacher, you know, these guys did it or I did it or like Jacob, like, you know, there, there's a thousand things, but you, you know, kind of got betrayed there. And so now, like, first of all, it sounds like you don't, you're scared to trust people. Second thing is that it sounds like you don't know how to care about people. Like, in, in some fundamental way, hence why you think maybe you're broken in some way. And then there's this whole other thing of, like, today we're going to talk about Jacob in the third person. <laughs> Jacob will talk about himself in the third person today, right? So, so where you sort of see your life and you use all these, like, I think pretty accurate phrases about your life, but you kind of talk about them like they're hypotheticals, right? This, this would be very difficult to deal with. I mean, you didn't say that, but I forgot exactly what you said, but it's kind of interesting. So it's almost like you're kind of unplugged. And then if you're unplugged, like I can imagine it would be hard to like connect with other people. Yeah. Right. Because you got to be plugged into yourself first. Yeah. So. And then like the last thing is then like now you're faced with this. And it's like, what, where do we even go? How do we even start going about fixing this? Like. Am I busted? Do I need to fix myself? Do I need to like learn how to talk to people? Like, do I need to just go to a bunch of therapy and will that fix the problem? Like, you know, what, what, what do you think? I 
I really don't know. Like, um, I'm just completely lost because it's almost like the situations I try, it's like I try not to make them matter, but they do matter. And then it's something that's affected me throughout life, even though I tried to lower the hurt, like, yeah, the pain, Investment. just try to push it away. Or even though I acknowledge it, it's almost like I kind of like think of them not really happening to me because, or like not being important to me because I have all, all these other things that happen in life. And then it just leads me to this point where I just feel like I'm the problem and I don't know how to fix it. I don't really know where to go. Yeah. What else do you do to push things away? Video games. Okay. Anything else? Lots of video games. Music. I've made music for like eight years now. To push things I've away? Played... Yeah. How does that work? Well, when you're sitting there messing around, like I use FL Studio, so I just load it up. I start making music. And then I just sit there and I don't have to think about the things in the outside world. I just sit there and... All that's all that got is this music program. I'm just making beeps and boops and kick drum, snare drum, and everything else is pushed away. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay. It's a distraction more than anything, I feel like. Do you think that some of your life experience comes out in your music? Probably. I mean, I have like a lot of stuff that I've made. I mean, I've been doing it for eight years, so hundreds of projects, some finished, hundreds finished, and probably thousands not finished, thousands deleted. And there's all sorts of stuff. There's sad stuff. There's angry stuff. There's chill stuff. So I feel like all those life experiences do kind of come together in those, and then they just get put out. And I feel like that's kind of cathartic, right? Like making something putting that emotion into it and then that emotion's kind of in that thing it's not that it's gone but you've kind of put it into a thing you've built something with that that sounds pretty cool yeah why did you start music eight years ago wanted to i thought making beats would be cool so i started doing that and then kind of wanted to make money with it and I've made like a little bit but not a lot I spent way more money on it than I've made but that's fine because I still enjoy doing it and um I feel like I wanted to one of the reasons was I wanted to be something I wanted to become something and through music I've kind of succeeded in that but I'm not famous or anything you know so so you said you thought making music would be cool did you think it would make yeah. you cool making beats i feel like it does in some sort of way like people people like it they're like oh that's cool like you make music like and sometimes people want to listen to it and they say that like i make good stuff and sometimes people just think it's cool that i make music they don't really go any further how does that make you feel it feels good it's nice that, especially like recently, like I haven't really gotten a lot of support from my family. My brother did listen to like a lot of my stuff, but he doesn't really care about it. But one of the days he did ask me, he's like, how's it going? Like, do you, and I was surprised. I was like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> Someone's like asking me about this. I feel like that shouldn't be surprising, but it was. And he's like, I don't want you to stop. Like, you've been doing it for so long, and I feel like you're really good. And that felt really good to hear. I think we can see how good it feels. <laughs> yeah, probably. Like, your face completely transforms when you, like, talk about this, you know, ray of sunshine. Yeah. Do we get to listen to your music? If if somebody wants to listen to my music, I will gladly share if people okay. on the stream want to or if you want to. Yeah, so at the end, let's do this. Why don't you send me something? You can sure. send me something via Discord, right? Don't don't send me a virus, yeah. bro. <laughs> <laughs> what about a Spotify link? A Spotify link is great. Perfect. Okay. S send me a Spotify link, and then we'll just yeah. like play it at the end. Sure. 
and then okay. we have to we have to decide. I know it's. I can see you're embarrassed. Um, but uh, I mean, I have to be honest. I make some very goofy songs sometimes. Not goofy as in bad, but my song on Spotify is about dating a. It's a rap song about dating a femboy. <laughs> nice, bro. <laughs> Let's go, son. Let's go. So it's a joke song, and so is the other one on Spotify. It, is it though? Yes, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> a rap song about dating a femboy. Okay. Yes, there's well, also one about fucking an alien. So. Okay. Well, there's definitely something in there. <laughs> for, maybe your therapist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but we're gonna, we're, sure. you know, we're gonna just respect terms of service violations and steer clear of that i can i anyway okay. well maybe we'll <clears throat> anyway so we'll, we'll still listen to something <laughs> i mean i guess we signed up for it now so in for yeah. a penny in for a pound or i could just i just throw a beat in there we could just listen to a beat or something you know maybe you don't have to listen to it i mean i think i think now we have to <laughs> all right well we're doing it i guess right. um so but let's let's go back to you know the rest of it Sure, yeah, yeah. The the safe territory of talking yeah. about your feelings and how everything's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um okay. All right. So I have a uh, uh, any questions for me? I don't know. Do you always do this like at the halfway point? You're like this is our little break thing. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, no, I've just I've seen plenty of your streams, so like I kind of. I, I mean, I I th I think we have enough to teach a couple of things. Like if there's like, and sometimes people will have questions, so it's it's not so much that. Uh, I mean, it's just like now we're kind of going back into it, right? So I feel like we just had an intermission where we're talking yeah. about rap songs about Fem dating boyfriend. fanboys, and so so now we're like going back into it. So like before we resume. Right. So let's just give you a second. Like if you have questions, because sometimes people have questions and here I am asking all of them and you get to ask them, too, if you have them. There may be more later, but if you just have anything, you know, it's just giving you space. I feel like I'm terrible at asking questions. I feel like I'm like really bad at that. Yeah. Because um, there's like things just don't pop into my mind. I feel like I feel like I you should like. Not Are you I'm terrible at to. asking questions in this situation or in general? In general. Yeah, I, I think that uh, it's not, a, I mean, it's a problem, but I, I think it's consistent, right? So, yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that. So, right. okay. So if, if questions come up, just, you know, ask them. <clears throat> All right. Let me, let me think for a second. Okay. So I need to just take some notes. Okay. Did you go to birthday parties growing up? Yeah. Did you have your own yeah. birthday parties? Yeah. What were they like? The one that I, that first comes to mind is um we had our like we had our basement in our in our house and then it was wasn't completely finished but it was touched up had drywall and stuff. And, um, I think it was, like, three of my closest friends. I think my cousin was there. And then another friend was there. So, quite a bit of people were just chilling in the basement. My mom made food. Like, we had food. We had video games. It was a pretty good time. You had one birthday party? No, that wasn't the only one, but, <laughs> um... That's the one that I remember the most. Okay. Because it was just a good, it was just a great birthday party. But you would get like invited to birthday parties and stuff like that would go and. I feel like not from like, well, yeah. So I usually just went to my one friend's because I feel like my other friend didn't really get birthday parties. His parents, not, not the best people. Okay. Um. 
And, and how do you feel about this conversation? I don't know. It's interesting just like thinking about it and exploring like I probably didn't go to too many birthday parties. So it's kind of interesting thinking about that. Yeah. So, I mean, like as a whole, like I, I know you felt a little bit uh, usually people feel a little bit nervous kind of going into it. Like, do you feel like it's uh, we've been OK so far? I mean, you know, I know we've talked about some <laughs> a, a lot of stuff that's like kind of personal. Yeah. Um, and I would say I've been completely nervous and anxious this entire time, but I'm just I'm going through it. So okay. I I find this you, um yeah I find this just interesting and fun. Yeah, so I, I think it's okay to have both of those feelings. I don't feel nervous at all. I feel like this is fantastic. So so yeah. I, I know you feel nervous and and there's a power dynamic in the situation and stuff like that. But I, I think it's I, I think you're it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. So I, I think you're quite eloquent actually. So so. There's a big difference Thank between you. thing describing confusing things accurately and speaking in a confused manner. So what? So I, why do you why do you find it fan fantastic? Just because I'm so good at explaining things or like detailing it. When I said I found it fantastic, what was your reaction? Well, it's nice. It feels good because it. I feel like it means I'm doing a good job and. I just want to do a good job. Right. Right. So, so you just want, I think you're doing a great job. So I'll tell you why. So I, I think you're very good at articulating. So I think life is confusing. Yeah. And the problem is that a lot of people, when they articulate the confusing nature of life, they feel like idiots. Mm -hmm. But there's a big difference between being an idiot and having a life that makes no fucking sense and articulating yeah. it properly. So I think you've actually painted a beautiful picture of what is very common for a lot of people, which is like, I'm stuck in this situation. I kind of recognize that I don't know how to do it properly, but I also recognize that it's not really like my fault, right? It's not like I, you know, made some catastrophic decision many years ago or continue to make, I'm sure there's some amount of guilt or whatever, but like, you know, I think it's it's a very challenging situation to be in, to have a life that was in some ways given to you, that life to be insufficient and not have the tools to turn it into what you want. And then you're stuck with this basic thing of like, okay, if I can't put together my life and you can acknowledge that like some of this stuff was not lucky for you, but then it gets really confusing about what am I responsible for? Because if I was dealt yeah. a bad hand, like, and my life is shit, like, isn't that just what happens? How much more can I do? What should I be doing? I've tried to do stuff, and I get burned. Mm -hmm. And so it can be, like, incredibly, I, I don't want to say paralyzing, because I, get the I don't get the sense you're paralyzed. I get the sense that if you had an idea of what to do, you would do it. But the basic problem is you don't know, like, what direction to go. Like, should you make friends? Like, how do you start caring about people? Like, I don't know. You want to you know what I thought of? Yeah. Talking about that. Literally yesterday, like, my one coworker that I was talking about, like, we're kind of friends. Um, I was going to ask her if she wanted to, like, hang out. Not, like, dating. She's gay. She has a girlfriend. She's going to, like, propose to her. Um, but, like, just friends. And I was like, like... Nothing really happened before this other than we were just kind of, like, messing around, like, all of us, like, coworkers, just talking, shooting the shit or whatever. But, like, I walked up to her, and I was like, I said her name. And I was like, just going to ask her. But then she turned and looked at me and went, yes, Jacob, or, like, something like that, like, in a frustrated tone. And I was like, I guess I was just being annoying or something. That, that fucking hurt. Like, just yesterday. Like, I feel like she doesn't normally do that stuff. I feel like maybe she was just overwhelmed, maybe. Because she doesn't really act like that. But then I felt like, man, I was being annoying. And that's like, that's like that kind of like punch in the gut where you're really trying to come out and do the thing that you thought was the right thing to do to kind of move forward and progress. Um, But then it was just, yeah, just he instant... I feel like I, I could have like continued, but it hurt and I just turned away and just went to go do my job. Okay. 
I'm going to be silent. It's not, I'm not leaving you hanging here. I'm just writing a lot because I think it's very significant. Hmm. Do you understand how other people feel? Fuck no. Okay. I've struggled with that for so long in my life where like I thought I was like Yeah. I thought I pretty much just had I don't know, what is um what is autism like the category for autism? Like it's a like autism spectrum disorder? Of... Neurodiverse. Yeah, but it's also yeah, so like I'm like thinking like I don't know how to communicate with people because I'm just there's something wrong with me. Like I was born wrong, but maybe you're well, not to say not to say autistic people are wrong, but yeah. you know what I mean. Um, just born different, and I've had to take my entire life and and try to figure out people and try to figure out their emotions and like facial expressions, body language, tone, and just kind of like put all that together to try to figure out how people are feeling in the moment and really like understand it. Yeah. I feel like I had to put it together like an alien, like. Yep. I, I imagine we haven't even gotten to romantic relationships, but I imagine romantic relationship is like trying to have sex with an alien. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Right. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. Do you know anyone who makes music about that, by the way? I, I think um, it would be really interesting to, you know, if someone made music about their experience of, you know, like, like legitimate, like, <laughs> musicians or just I'm trolling you man because no because i do <laughs> yeah I and are you a legitimate of... musician yeah i definitely mm -hmm. am wow look at the balls on this guy i mean i work hard for my music i've i've struggled for eight years and i feel like i feel like some of it sounds really good are we gonna get to listen to, be... to the good stuff or the Fem honestly fem boyfriend is a banger i'm, I'm not gonna lie okay let's right. okay I'm, I'm i'm invested dude let's go <laughs> all right uh, fem boy what what's the name fem boyfriend fem boy so it's friend. like fem boy and boyfriend but fem boyfriend oh damn yeah, son yeah. <laughs> that's good yeah yeah okay give me a second like a minute mm-hmm Okay. If you need to use the bathroom or anything, go for it because I'm going to need a couple minutes. Okay. Couple and minutes. That's for, uh, stream can go. Y'all can go take a bathroom break because I'm just trying to put everything together. Okay. Jeez. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. I'll be right back.
I need like probably 90 more seconds, okay? No problem. Okay. So let me ask you a couple or a couple other questions. So you said that yes, uh, yesterday you talked to your friend and yeah. she seemed annoyed by you and you said maybe she's overwhelmed. Yeah. What should you do if a friend of yours is overwhelmed? Um I haven't really been good at like doing that kind of stuff like just trying to I don't know, reassure someone or like calm them down like help them calm down um tell them it's gonna be okay like those are kind of like the ideas that come to my head and i really haven't been like good at that i feel like i'm still not good at that but sometimes i do try how do you try um sometimes i just ask like do you need help like can i help you sometime um and what do people usually say No, because I feel like I don't ask that enough. Okay. I don't really um, get in like into asking people if they need help. I also don't ask for help a lot. Okay. Do you know how to ask for help? I mean, it's it's really it's as simple as just be like, "Hey, can you help me?" But like, it's hard to take. I don't know if it's like pride or that whole like betrayal of trust thing. Where, like, I just don't ask people for help because I just want to do it myself. I feel like I could do either I'm just, I'll do a better job doing it myself, really. I feel like that's kind of like also the trust thing. Or, like, I just don't really want people to get in the way or something. I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and say no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Right. Simple <laughs> answer, no. Right. So, so like, let, let's understand this, okay? So, so. See, when we talk about asking for help, you're right. The words are the easy part. The hard part about asking for help is not in the words, although even that can be difficult for some people if we're not taught. It's all the crap that goes with asking for help. How do we think yeah. about ourselves? What is this person going to do? Am I burdening them? Is it silly for me to ask for help? It'd be better if I just did it myself, right? This is what makes asking for help hard. It's not the, you know... Can you please help me with this? It's all the crap internally that goes with it that we're oftentimes not taught. Right? Like people will say like, oh, like if you need help, you should ask for it. But what do I do when I ask for help and then all the kids in my class make fun of me because I'm such an idiot? Like no one tells you how to deal with that. Right? They, right. So, so asking for help is actually one of the most deficient skills in our society. It's crazy. Okay. So we're going to try something. Um, I'm going to, I have to do some, I'm going to pull out the iPad. Does that work for you? Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> okay. So I'm going to do a couple of different things. So I'm going to screen share with you so you can see this. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. And then we have to do this. Okay. So let's talk about Jacob. So I'm going to offer a lot of different ideas. We're going to go through a lot of different principles. 
I've been talking yeah. to you for about an hour, a little over an hour. So we have no idea if any of this stuff is correct. Does that make sense, Jacob? Um, like, like... These are not you, answers. These are hypotheses. These are things okay. to think about. These are things for potentially you to continue to work on, right? So I, I understand you're yes. doing some personal work nowadays. So these are just angles for you to consider. But I think there's a lot of general stuff about your situation, which I've seen a lot, which there's a lot of data about. So we're going to kind of illustrate some of those principles. Does that make sense? Yeah. So here's you. And you are confused. What are you confused mm -hmm. by? Am I broken? I don't know exactly how to care. But I don't not care. Right? I'm kind of like capable of some relationships. So I can do it, but I don't know how to create them. So there, it's in there, right? Yeah. So and, and then like, I want to connect, but it's a bad idea. Make sense? Does this feel mm -hmm. pretty accurate so far? Yeah. And then going back to the am I broken, like, I acknowledge bad shit happened. But it isn't really my fault. But I still have to deal with it we yes. good mm -hmm. would you say that these kind of like resonate with you some yes okay so how how, how is this picture the picture is like pretty accurate not very accurate like in the middle where are we i feel like you're pretty much on the spot okay so first thing is like no wonder you're confused because these things seem genuinely confusing Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's understand a couple of different things going on. So number one, betrayal of trust. At times in your life, you've had relationships. And these relationships were people that mattered to you. And it, and like when you're close to someone, right? Like we saw your face like absolutely light up when you just like when your brother was like, hey, how's your music going? Spontaneous, Right. They, they, yeah. they didn't have to you don't have to ask him you'd be like hey like hey i've been working on music and hint hint nudge nudge wink wink it, ask me about it, blew it my mind yeah right so blew your mind and like that's crazy bro because like that should not be a once in a lifetime occurrence no right and, it, no, it and it's sad so you've had a couple of things right we talked about your mom and it sounds like your mom is actually like a fantastic mom i i know we're We've talked about some of her negative experiences, but I'm not getting the sense that she's like a bad woman or anything. In fact, quite the opposite. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think sometimes we just, when we share an isolated example, we can make people sound bad, but like, it sounds like she really does care about you and, and does what she knows how to do. Yes. And then you had this high school friend, this fucker. Let's <laughs> call it the axe incident. Sure. <laughs> axe incident. That makes right? it sound even worse. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then you discover it's the body spray, and then you realize it's even worse than a real axe. Oh, my God. Real axes we can deal with the fucking body spray? Oh, my God. This stream was, sponsored oh, dude, by like, Axe Body Spray. Not like I was in World War One, bro. It's like mustard gas. <laughs> All right. I'm sure there's a fanboy joke somewhere in there, but I can't quite <laughs> connect the dots. Femboys don't wear Axe body spray. That's what it is. I knew it was there Fem somewhere. Thanks Femboys, a lot, buddy. Femboys are not sponsored by Axe. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So. All right. So, so there's a betrayal of trust, right? And then what yeah. happens is, like, there's almost a responsive 
callus that forms, right? So uh, maybe, I don't know if I spelled that right. But when we kind of think about, so, so it's a kind of like you, you try to avoid thinking about things. You try to avoid caring, right? Because you have to avoid caring because you don't want to get hurt. And when you trust people, like sometimes you get hurt. And so since yeah. you avoid caring, it kind of gets hard to care. And we talked a lot about yeah. like, you don't know how to care, right? Like you care mm -hmm. about some people, but it's like hard for you to really like understand and care and and stuff like that. I'm, I mean, I'm making it sound make it sound like you're just so so awful at this no, stuff. It's, but it, it's true. It just it no. That's what I've done my like my whole life is like avoid caring. Yeah, avoid caring, right? Because caring hurts. So like we're just gonna stop yeah. doing that. So then of course like you're gonna have difficulty with relationships. So let's talk a little bit more about avoidance of caring. So not only is this going on where you like avoid caring, right? You actively avoid it, but, or actually let's call this difficulty of caring. Okay. And you kind of say that you should care, but you're not quite sure how. And then like, then we get to a couple of interesting things. So, a weird question for you, Jacob. How does one learn how to care? I feel like that's shown to you. That's provided in examples when you're growing up. And were you shown that? No. <laughs> no. Nope. Right? So, you have difficulty caring. So, one piece is you're avoiding it. Second piece is you just weren't taught. Right? So it sounds like your grandmother was like completely AFK with your mom. And then your mom like learned a lot and has kind of done the best that she can. But also like you can't fix that. I, I don't know if your mom, we are not going to talk about whether your mom has been in therapy and stuff. But usually if you want to fix that in one generation, it takes like a fair amount of therapy to like really do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so this actually practically translates into a lack of skills. Like emotional skills. Communication skills. Communication. And emotional skills. So we'll get to gotcha. both of those. But so so one thing that we talked about is like don't know how to ask for help. Yes. But let's understand this. This example you gave about yesterday is perfect. Right? So how did you feel when your friend was snappy with you? I felt hurt, but a little bit understanding because I feel like maybe it was just the wrong time to ask. Very good. Okay. So when you say it's the wrong time to ask, why would you think that? Because she seemed frustrated or overwhelmed. She seemed overwhelmed. Yeah. And when a friend of yours is overwhelmed, what should you do? Help them out. Do you um, know how to do that? No. <laughs> right. So this is exactly, this is a lack of caring, right? So it's not that you don't care. It's that you don't know how to care. So yeah. this is a case, a prime example of like, your friend is having a tough day. You recognize she's having a tough day. Could you be autistic? Maybe. Who the hell knows? But you're, you're aware enough and empathic enough to have a probably pretty good hypothesis that this is out of character for her. There must be something kind of going on with her. And you, you sort of recognize, but you just don't know what to do. Right? So don't know how to care. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about, like, you know, your your friendships. So, so it sounds like you sometimes put in effort to make friends. And that doesn't really work out very well. We sort of right. talked about that at the very beginning. Do you remember that? Yeah. Well, yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about like what, like any examples come to mind? Sorry, my, my mind is a little, um, it thinks a lot of different things. What was, uh, don't worry question? about it. It's actually not that important. You following okay. along? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
if you're not, you know, let me know. You can ask for clarifications because just because you're following, uh, not following along doesn't mean that it's a problem on your end. Maybe what I'm writing makes no fucking sense. Right? I feel, I feel like it does. Okay. My, my brain just kind of goes a lot of different directions sometimes. Okay. So next thing that we're going to talk a little bit about is this weird Jacob talks about himself in the third person. That's the most confusing one, bro. That's so... Yeah. I don't even know. Right, you don't actually talk about yourself in the third person, but you describe your experiences as hypotheticals, as, like, externalized yeah. things, right? So this has just a little... Just a little whiff. You got a touch of the dissociation, bruh. I'm not diagnosing you with anything. But this is very common for people who have difficulty connecting with themselves, right? So if we, if we look at these... a lot of difficulty with that. A lot of difficulty with what? Connecting with myself. Yeah. Right? So what is that? When you say you have difficulty connecting with yourself, what is your experience of that? Which I recognize the not irony of the question. Not understanding what I'm feeling or, like, how I'm feeling. Okay. Being, like, trying to, like, reach in and just kind of, like, like, I'm just blind. Like, I'm just grasping for something. Okay. Let me see if I can turn up your volume somehow. Am I, am I quiet? Because I can turn myself up. Yeah, turn yourself up, bro. It wasn't quiet before. Is that better? Oh, my God. Silky smooth, too, baby. Too much better? Okay, all right. No, 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 that's great. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's like it's like reaching in and trying to, like, find something, but I just can't. Yeah, so 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 this is, this is like, really common. So, so connection with the self, okay? So, you know, I, I know you have access to treatment and whatnot so this is like a better conversation for you to have more privately or like there's there's a version of this that's important to have privately we're not going to assess today whether you're dissociating or depersonalizing or anything like that the main thing to understand is that there's a spectrum so on right. the spectrum we have at one end of the spectrum clinical dissociation and at the other end of the spectrum a connection like a very very like positive authentic connection with the self where you know who you are and all this kind of stuff Mm -hmm. so if we understand like why does this happen there are a couple of reasons the biggest thing is avoidance of emotion so if we look at how our identity forms okay our identity comes from a series of let me actually do this so i'm going to stop screen sharing this with you just so i can see your face we're going to go back to this and then we're going to do can you see my face? I mean, we can leave this on, but... Oh, I'll I, just, uh... I, okay. we're, I we're can just see back. you. Okay. So, <clears throat> here's how our sense of identity... For, here's how we know who we are. So, yeah. our sense of self develops from the integration of emotional experiences. So, if we, like, look at... Like, we know who you are. Like, do you get this? Mm -hmm. Like, I know it's kind of crazy. We know you at this point. We, we know you. That's why we like yeah. you. Yeah. Because we figured you out. How, how do we know who you are? What because we... I exist and we talk about my experiences and you but... see them objectively from the outside? No, no, no. It's not that we see them objectively from the outside. It's the opposite. We see them subjectively from the inside. That's how we know who you are. We got to know mm. you because you had this experience with your mom. Because you, like, this is like the Axe body spray. And then... The fam boyfriend moments that teach us who you are. It's the moments where it doesn't matter whether it's good or it's bad. Like, you know, like even the stuff about like telling us that you play, you know, Rocket League or whatever. Right. And like the, the problems, like it, it's not the fact that you play CSGO. It's a, I don't play fucking CSGO anymore because it's fucking full of cheaters. That's when we get to know you. Right. And right yeah. now you're smiling. It's when you smile. Like these are these are the moments of your life. So if you if I if you were to ask me who is Jacob. I'd say Jacob is a guy who like was not dealt the best hand in life. He's doing the best that he can. And he struggles with a lot of things, but he's a really solid dude. He loves making music. He like has a lot to give. The poor guy has all this stuff to give, but it can't cross the bridge between in here and out there. And yeah. he really wants to be like more connected with people. He doesn't want to be like isolated and stuff like that. But this poor guy doesn't know. And so he comes up with these fucking songs because that's the only way. 
and he makes this music. And when he makes this music, he connects with someone else. He doesn't, he doesn't receive it, but he certainly sends it out there and, and someone's listening to that music and they're really getting it. Like, they're like, yeah, like this is a person that brings value to the world. Like, I love this, right? The music doesn't even have to be the best. And this is who Jacob is. How does that sound? Sounds pretty good. D does it, when you say sounds pretty good, I mean, like, I agree it sounds good. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> You know, is that accurate? Is that who you are? I'd say, yeah, that's, I mean, obviously there's going to be more to it. Like we don't have eight hours to get into my entire life, but I'd say from what you've heard, I would say, yeah, that wraps it up. Right. So how do you feel about that person? I feel conflicted. Tell me. Like, all I ever do is try, but then it doesn't feel like enough. So I just try harder, and it's not enough. And I try harder, and it's not enough. And it just burns and hurts. And then I want, I don't want to be stuck in my room, sitting here, making songs about femboys all the time. As fun as that is, I want to also be out there with people and connect with them and enjoy people and not just be lonely. But I can't. Right. So, so, and, and that, that's beautiful too. Like that's part of who you are. You're someone who struggles. Yeah. You, you don't, you don't want to be like this anymore. Like you're okay with a piece of it, but like not this much, right? You, <laughs> right. you, want, you want more of a full life. Right. And I think we all see that. Like that's genuine. We, I see someone who's striving and resilient and just got fucking burnt too much and now doesn't know what to do. So you're kind of exhausted. Right. So if, if we yeah. kind of like look at this, how do we understand who you are? It is through a string of emotional experiences. Yeah. So when we integrate emotional experiences into our sense of self, uh, that's where our sense of self comes from. So if you really look at one of the consequences of traumatic events, okay? So this is we're talking about just the general literature on, on trauma. So people who go through trauma lose their sense of identity. And the literal neuroscientific mechanism of that is emotional avoidance, numbing out of our emotional brain, and then what happens is our life becomes lifeless. It loses all of its color. And then you just start kind of like existing day to day. Like you have challenges. Like if I have a lifeless kind of colorless comic of someone's life, I can portray that this person has difficulties and we can all objectively say like, oh yeah, like this person has difficulties. La, da, 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 da. This person is having a difficulty today, a difficulty today, a difficulty tomorrow, but there's no color to it. So literally what we know about sort of helping people through trauma treatment and, and developing a development of an identity is it requires emotional integration of experiences. So now we run into a couple of other problems, okay? So we're mm -hmm. going to go back to this for a second. Let me screen share with you. Okay. Does that make sense? And, um, and, yeah. For the most part, yeah. Okay. I'm struggling a little bit with it, but what are you struggling I got the with? gist. Uh, just like the last part you said, it kind of, it didn't really connect in my mind. About the, uh, the development of identity? Yeah. Okay. So, so w when I tell a story about my identity, yeah. my identity is not developed by what I ate for breakfast today and what I ate for breakfast 10 years ago and what I ate for breakfast 20 years ago. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's not who I am. So right. when we're synthesizing a sense of our identity... So, like, are there any, like, do you watch anime or, like, movies or, like, is there any character that you like? Um, I know it's kind of a fucking random question. <laughs> do you want to know? I feel like this is kind of edgy. It's, like, um, it's almost kind of edgy, but not really. Maybe I think about it that way, bro. but. <laughs> do you know, do you know the show Burn Notice? No. Oh, okay, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. It was on, yeah, like, USA, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I love Michael Weston. He's just a badass, bro. He just fucking kicks ass and fucking treats people and takes down multiple government conspiracies. And I feel like we could all strive to be that. Okay. So, so it's not edgy. It's cringe. <laughs> it's a little, yeah, it's a little cringe. I feel like, <laughs> okay, yeah. but, but it, it's a pretty good show. So, so, yeah. but when we think about like, who is that person? What are the moments that define Michael Weston for you? Well, the reason why I was like thinking about it, like how it was like edgy, but 
we, we came to the conclusion that it wasn't um, that was cringe is because he's very disconnected and cut off uh, emotionally. And I feel like I really relate to that. Okay. Right. So, so even then, so I know it sounds kind of crazy. So you, it's fine that you relate to him, but there are going to be mo emotionally impactful moments in the show where he is disconnected. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's actually a really emotional moment in the show. It's like, oh, right. this poor guy is so disconnected. So if we look at our lives, literally our sense of identity is made up of emotional milestones. That first time, like, so your, your life is made up by emotional milestones, right? It's like this time when your mom read your diary or your mom read your journal or whatever, found this book, this moment where with the Axe body spray, and it's so vivid, there's so much emotional energy. These are the moments that define us. This moment where your brother reached out to you and was like, hey, you should keep making music. These are emotionally charged moments. Those, that's yeah. how we get to know you. So anytime we avoid our emotion, we stop developing our identity. We become trapped where we are because all you have is those emotional experiences. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. And so if we think about like, you know, your emotional moments going forward, like that's what you want, right? Like you want more of these like emotional moments. And I think you're actually okay with the highs and lows. Like even, even being bullied for being gay, like that's okay as long as there's emotional resolution at the end. So that's what's really interesting about life is that as long as we're kind of like we get our emotions taken care of in some way, we're actually okay with negative things happening to us. Yeah. Okay. So the avoidance of emotion leads to, oh crap, leads to disconnection of the self. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is where that weird hypothetical stuff comes from, but let's not worry about so much about that. The last thing that this actually does is this makes empathy very difficult. Okay? And now, like, now we're going to get to something that's kind of weird. Okay? So just bear with me. So, here's you. And when you're dealing with the aliens, those are antennas. Okay? Yes. And, like, when you don't... So, empathy... What, what's, your, what's your understanding of what empathy is? Um... Being able to, well, there's sympathy and empathy, and I kind of confuse the two. I think empathy Everyone is the one does. where, I think empathy is the one where you are able to feel the emotions because that's just some something somebody's going through, and you can tell that they're going through something. What is sympathy? Sympathy is where you sympathize because you feel the same thing, like you felt the same thing, right? Okay, so. Uh, uh, yes and no. So, so let's understand. This. So okay. empathy is being able to connect your emotions to someone else's emotions. You'll actually feel yeah. the same thing. I'm an empath. An empath means that we are connected. There's an umbilical cord. So if someone else is feeling sad, I'm feeling sad. I think you're okay. actually better at sympathy than you are at empathy. Because I asked you, like, do you know what, like, you know, I asked you some question. You're like, fuck no. I have no idea what someone else is actually, like, feeling. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. so the alien is is capable of sympathy. The alien is, like, when we look at, like, a fucking rhino in a zoo, we can look at this rhino and we can say, man, this is so sad. Like, poor rhino. But we have yeah. no idea, like, if the rhino is happy or sad. We have no fucking idea what the rhino is feeling. Like, we can't tell. So we can have sympathy for animals in a zoo, but we can have empathy for like, I have empathy for you because I know what it's like to be bullied in high school for or middle school for being gay. Like big part of my experience oh, so you too. Went, you went through the same thing? I don't know if I went through the same thing, but I certainly was bullied a lot. And generally speaking, one of the mechanisms of bullying was an attribution towards homosexuality when I was growing up. Yeah, I've, I've witnessed it for other people, too. So. I mean, it's, like, very common, right? It's, it's like, yeah. one of the most devastating insults, and there's all kinds of problems in our society because of that. So, yeah. so, so this is where, and, and now we get to a, a big, 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 big problem. So if your friend is feeling sad or frustrated, you can intellectually, because you're a smart guy, you can understand that, and you can actually feel sympathy. But... This is what's kind of weird. So, so right now in empathy, what happens is there's sadness over here and the sadness comes into you in some way. And so we're both feeling sad together. Number one, this mm. is how bonds form. Mm. 
shared emotional experiences is how bonds form, right? So when I'm playing a game of like, let's say CSGO and my team is down and it's like 2v5 and we both have knives left and that's all we've got and we somehow win and we make a comeback. This is the person you add to your friends list because y'all did it. You had a shared emotional experience. That's what binds people together. This is why mm -hmm. falling in love is such a beautiful thing, provided both people are doing it, right? right? Because now we have this shared emotional experience of this is what Romeo and Juliet is about. Both of them are like, I'm in love with you, and this is a terrible fucking idea. So they share that together, and that's how a bond forms. Now, mm -hmm. when people struggle with empathy, so because of this disconnection, this avoidance of emotion, you have difficulty connecting with other people. Now, this creates a huge problem. So when you don't have empathy, this results in self-blame. So when you have nothing over here, like you're not capable of kind of like telling what is going on inside another person, then this becomes a vacuum. And then all of the blame ends up over here. Does that kind of make mm. sense? It's like when I'm empathic, I know what's over there and what's over here because I can feel what's over there. Mm -hmm. And I can feel what's over here. So if you look at people who are like highly sensitive persons or em empaths or people who have emotional umbilical cords, their problem is that they're so empty over here that whatever is over here like goes in here and fills this up. It's like a one-way street. Okay? Do you understand that? Sounds, sounds terrible. It's terrible. Yours is equally bad. Don't worry, bro. So in <laughs> your case, what's going on is you have nothing over here. You can't detect everything, so all of the negativity, which on sub subconscious level your brain is still detecting, all fills this up. So when your friend is having a bad day, whose fault is it? Who do you blame Whatever's for your interaction? On. I mean, it would have to be me because I wouldn't understand. Right, right, but do you see, not, it wouldn't have, do you remember when you said, oh, maybe I said something wrong and maybe I screwed up and maybe I'll try again yes. later? Like, this is where, remember, we were talking about the self-referential stuff at the very beginning of our talk together. Yeah. So when your friend is having a bad day, you're like, maybe I said, I did, I said something wrong. Mm -hmm. Even though on an intellectual level, you understand that you didn't say anything wrong. You're like, maybe I fucked up, so I'm not going to say anything else. And now yeah. this is the problem. It's like, so, so when, you, we, when we have empathy, we kind of like, we hold ourselves responsible for everyone else around us. And, it, and we, we will also be very hyper vigilant to like any sign of negativity because we can't, I don't know if this kind of makes any sense. You can't put any of the negativity over there because you can't feel the negativity over there. So the only place for the negativity to go is in you. Does that make sense at all? I feel like it's, it's, it's a, it's a little confusing, but uh, I'm kind of, I'm getting it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like, but are I, you, you're saying I'm sympathetic or empathetic? I think you're sympathetic. So I think you can intellectually understand, like 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 the a rhino is in in a zoo. Like you can yeah. understand that your friend is like having a bad day. Yeah. But I, I don't think you you can feel the negativity over. Like I mean, you detect it in some way, but you don't yeah. attribute it to her. You're not like this is a problem on her end that she is having so a bad day. I remember you talking about something kind of like this, where like you use your thoughts to feel rather than like your actual emotions. I don't remember what video it was, but Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So, so this is where uh, you're, you're spot on. So let me just go back to this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I don't know if this kind of makes sense, but like, if we kind of look at what the situation is, like when she is having a bad day and you try to talk to her, your interpretation is I should shut the hell up. You don't think about asking further. You don't think about other kind of stuff because you're not able to detect that that like problem is over there. And instead it turns into self blame does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So, yeah. so, but the only reason there's self-blame is because you're not aware of like that other person out there. I don't know if that makes sense, but you can't feel that other person. It's so hard to describe because maybe I'm just doing a bad job of it, but. I mean, I get it. I understand. Yeah. Okay. So this is where, so th this is where one of the, the all this stuff, I think, I, I, first of all, I think you can, you can get basically whatever, like everything that you want, Jacob first thing okay okay I, I think you can make friends i think you can find love i think it's like all fixable i think it's all doable and i think there's like a, a series of things that need to happen the first is that you need to connect with yourself 
So what that means yeah. is no longer avoiding your emotions. So I know that that's difficult and I know you're working on that and you've been working on it for a little while. So that's great. Um, so that has to happen. And once you are, because as long as you're numbing yourself, other people aren't going to be able to connect with you either. Like right. when we, hear, well, that's kind of like the whole, that's kind of like the whole point is like kind of pushing people away because of like the betrayal of trust or whatever, you know, like just not wanting to get hurt. It, well, well, yeah. So I think that's a separate thing. So the fear oh, okay. that someone will betray you is separate from okay. them not being able to connect with you. So gotcha. I, I would venture that, you know, if we think about making music, like that's cool. Like, and you're yeah. a cool guy who makes music, but if you didn't make music, what would you be? What would people say about you? If I was just the same guy without the music, I feel like, I mean, I, I'm learning German too. So that's kind of like another thing, I guess. Do you want to take that away too? If I'm the guy yes. that doesn't learn German. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Smart. Yeah. Right. So, 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 so this is, the, that's the thing is like you, what you're doing is you're putting like medals on your chest. To like yeah. show people that you're someone. I think there's a lot of genuineness to the, the music. I'm not saying there isn't. But what I'm yeah. saying is that there's like a fundamental you-ness that I don't know that people see. Right? Like it, like people, like he's just kind of there. Because I don't show it? Yeah. I don't, yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's not even about betrayal. We're not even telling you that you need to trust anyone. What I'm saying right. is that like the person that you are, you're so avoidant for your own, own emotions that you, they don't come out. Because so I having, feel like people almost don't really deserve it ah uh, now we get something good <laughs> i feel like they don't deserve, deserve it. it you're right tell me about that bro now we get to the anger just fuck them bro like why do they deserve it they didn't earn it tell me more i don't even know how to explain it it's like put I don't know why they don't deserve it. They just don't. Like, I don't want to give people that. I I want it for myself so that I can be happier. Like, some for some reason, I think that it makes me happier. That I get to keep my piece of myself and that other people can't take it. Yeah, so now we get to... This is something. Yeah, right? so, and so... it hurts. It hurts a lot. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. I don't want to cry on stream. <laughs> I it's don't okay. want to cry on stream. Just think fanboys. Think <laughs> fanboys. <laughs> Fanboy X body spray. New product. Right. So Get your there, Fanboy here Axe we body are spray. again. Running away, running away, running away. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe I'll think about it later, but like, I don't. I want to sit here and think about it because if I do, bro, I'm going to start crying. I don't want to cry in front of thousands of people. Okay, fair enough. So then we're we're going to help you not do that, right? But okay. like, there's anger there. Like, I've, do you want, I mean, something that might help you understand me a bit more. I was a very, very angry kid. I was always angry, always. Um, I would throw shit. I would call my mom a bitch uh, till she washed my mouth out with soap. Then I didn't do that anymore because I'll tell you, soap doesn't taste good, especially when it's like solid soap and it gets stuck in your teeth and then oh no good but um identity you see yeah yeah identity <laughs> eventually i grew out of the anger but i still had it like when i played video games i'd be very competitive in like csgo and stuff and i'd get pissed off at that but i've really pushed myself away from anger and i i really only get angry when i'm like at work and something's really frustrating i get angry um but i still i'm trying to just not let anger control me and it's hard when it's also linked to, man, fuck them. Why fuck them? Because they don't get it. I feel like they don't get it. And I don't, I don't want people to come in and tell me what's what and try to push their point of view on me and... Or like change who i am i guess i don't that doesn't really make sense but that's kind of like what popped in my head i'll tell you what i see this mm. is what my empathy is telling me because they weren't fucking there for me 
when I needed it, they weren't fucking there. Exactly. So why the fuck do they get me now? Like, you know, like fuck this empathy and being compassionate and caring about other people. Like why, 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 how's this fair? Fuck them. That's what my empathy is telling me. I have no idea if that's true or not, but that's what I feel. No, that sound, sounds right to me. It sounds exactly like that's the whole point of like they don't get it is because they weren't there and they just maybe they understand on some other level, but they well, weren't they there for to me. Understand? Yeah. And they just I didn't get the help that I needed. So why do I put myself out there? We ask, do you know how to care? Maybe you do, but you don't want to. It's weird, right? Because we've been asking, like, I, why didn't, why don't you care? I story? don't. And I then don't, you think you're a bad person. Yeah. Does this make you a bad person? I don't think so. I mean, why not? Maybe I've maybe I've been an asshole sometimes. Maybe I've. But, but everybody does. Everybody comes along and does one or two things at least. At least, you know, a couple asshole-like sure. things. But Like wear Axe Body Spray. Especially the fucking, what is it, the chocolate kind. I think it was like the oh chocolate God, kind. There's a chocolate kind. It was like chocolate something. It's terrible. But, um, yeah. So this is why things are confusing, Jacob, because it, it's, not, it's not that they're confusing. It's that you're not willing to look at some pieces, to care or not to care. You're resentful. You're angry, right? And, and that's not, it, it doesn't define you. The, the only reason that it feels this, I, know this, I don't know if this is going to make any fucking sense, but so like, you know, all, like I get the sense that you're, you're hesitant, Right? You can't move forward. You can't like say what needs to be said. You can't do what needs to be done. And that's because there's like, there's one, it's like one of your legs is like stuck back there and you don't realize that you have it. So there's like, it's like it, stuck in like cement or something. Yeah. Right. And then you're trying to move forward, but that leg doesn't want to move forward. This is where we have to be very careful because it's not just that you're incapable. It's that you're unwilling. You're angry. And now this is the crazy, you've got to figure that out, man. Like, it's not my place to say that you're good or bad. I don't think you're good or bad. You have to decide what the right thing is, right? And I think the right answer is going to be that you work through that anger in some way. But now we get to another thing, which is, I think you need to talk to your mom. And, and really like, and it's not that you have to have some like, you know, come to Jesus conversation, but I, I think you should really spend some time like talking to your mom about what it was like growing up with, with her, your, her grandmother, I mean, sorry, your grandmother, you know, even asking her like, Hey, do you remember when you found that stuff that, that I said I was suicidal? Maybe she won't remember. Maybe she'll be emotionally avoidant. How did you understand that? What did you think was going on? Like, I think like this stuff is still alive within you. And That's so hard to bring up, though. It is. It's what makes it hard? Impossible. Yep. Fear. Of what? Bad results. Like, the same thing kind of like in me, I guess. Like, anger or resentment or, like, the avoidance that I do. Like you said, like, maybe she would be avoidant. And just not getting the proper response, I guess. Like... So healthy response so i i don't know that i don't know that this actually needs to be done but i think there's all kinds of challenges it with as well because you also have to be careful because it seems like you interpret ambiguous social stuff because when you don't have empathy you can be very sensitive to even like neutral responses mm -hmm. right so anything less than perfect may be like interpreted really poorly so i think this maybe not yet Maybe you do something like family therapy or something like that, if that's an option for you. But like, I get the sense that there's just, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there, dude. Like you're an ang angry dude. But and I don't even show it. Yeah, of course like, not. Like not usually. And because and you're scared of it and you've learned how to stick it in the basement. Right? Yeah. Like, like a, lot some of, a lot of, a lot of internalization. Right. It's really bad. I've, I've internalized a lot and I feel like I've done it 
I've done it so hard at sometimes to the point where like it stings mm -hmm. on the inside. Yeah. And that's the worst. I never recommend that for anyone. Because that really, really hurts. I'm conflicted because on the one hand, you said you didn't want to cry and it's clear you're right on the edge. And on the other hand, it sounds like you're saying something that is really important. So I don't know if I should ask more or if we should talk about nerd rage and letting it out on hey, the internet. Go ahead and go ahead and ask more because like I want I want people to know this. Maybe somebody's going through the same thing and fuck, maybe they're sitting here about to cry. So tell me about the sting. Tell me about how it hurts you to be the way you are. Because I just want to be let out. Like I feel like I'm caging myself in and I feel like some of it's the other people outside and they're caging me in. And it just pushes all down to this like one little point, this needle that just stabs you right in the soul. Because like it goes against me, but it also, it's like I'm going against myself, I'm fighting myself. But it's like the people that I want to trust or care about are also fighting me. They kind of like go hand in hand. And it just, it burns, man. It burns on the inside. And then I just ignore it. I ignore it because I don't know how to deal with it. How does it feel to say that? I feel a little better. It feels like I've acknowledged. And I feel like acknowledging is helping a little bit that way I can probably sit there and think about it a little bit more and kind of come to terms. So if you didn't <laughs> beautiful articulate, right? Like to, turning it into a needle, just, just you're compressing it as much as you can, but it's like a fucking like, you know, space, like, you know, about space, yeah. like stars and shit. Singularity. It's like a fucking neutron star, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Very small. It's like yeah. a, or like, yeah, black hole. It just everything just gets put in that one point and it just stabs you right in the heart. Density, though. Very, very, it's very, very intense stabbing. Yeah. You've taken something that used to be across your whole soul and you've crammed it down into a very dense little thing. Now, here's the question. Because you said that they hurt you too, right? You take their hurt and you take something that you're going to put on the outside world and you put it in, into you. What would it look like if you pointed it where it should be that's the thing is like i some of it should be in other places but i don't want to let i don't want to let the anger the frustration or the pain out and hurt someone else i'd rather hurt myself than do that yeah because maybe some people deserve it but i'm not going to let it all out on one person so i i think there's a uh a very tricky balance here. I think it's got to come out, but it doesn't have to hurt. And this is where it's, it's an issue of, of knowing how, right? So it's got to come out, dude. So this is like, I mean, Freud noticed this when he was around, I don't know, like around 1900, where he noticed that anger turned against the self is the source of depression. When people stop getting angry at the outside world, they become depressed. And so I, I think that that anger is there, like the resentment is there, the unfairness, the unfairness, Jacob, the unfairness of your life. I wouldn't call it unfair either. Why not? I'm, I'm not going to sit there and call it unfair and kind of absolve myself of responsibility. Maybe I'm not responsible for all of it, but I'm going to try but my fucking hardest. But you're going to take responsibility for all of it. I guess, yeah. <laughs> right? I'm yeah. not saying you shouldn't try your hardest. Right. And we're not saying, I mean, so nowhere in this conversation have we heard a single mention of a dad. Right? And we don't need to get into it now, but I think it's a conspicuous absence. Yeah. And so like, I mean, I'm, 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 and this is that, that too is like when you say, I'm not going to, that's anger. Fuck it. I refuse. 
I'll, I'll accept all of the responsibility. Why? Because if you have responsibility, you have the power to change things. You're not surrendering. Right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to surrender. I feel like it's a, kind of like a good kind of anger though. Yeah, it certainly can be. Yeah. Right. So I, except I'm not... when you turn it all against yourself. And I think the biggest problem is that, that see, here's the problem. So let's say, let's say you and I queue up for a, a match of Rocket League. And let's say. That sounds awesome. That does sound awesome. Just wait. <laughs> We're not done with our hypothetical. Remember the context okay. of the conversation. <laughs> okay. It's not going to be awesome. <laughs> right. And so let's say that I fucking suck at Rocket League because I've literally never played the game. And I don't know if you is it like two v two. Is there a two v two? Two v two, three v three. Okay, so let's say we go, we go two v two, right? And yeah, and then we lose because I suck. And then okay. you go on blaming yourself. You're like, I'm such a piece of shit. I'm so bad at Rocket League. And there's no question that you can improve to the point that potentially you could carry my bitch ass to victory. Right. But the problem is that the moment that you start accepting responsibility for what is my fault, it fundamentally becomes unfixable. So if I go on saying, you're a piece of shit, that's why we're losing. And then you go on saying, I'm a piece of shit, that's why we're losing. If you accept all of the responsibility, we will never be world champions. Responsibility must be attributed to who truly owns it. And you accepting it for other people doesn't actually fix anything. It may make you feel good. It may let you protect other people. Oh, mom, I was just venting. You may be able to do all kinds of stuff. But if they are actually at fault and you accept responsibility for it, those patterns will continue. You know what really sucks? The idea of a 10-year-old trying to take responsibility from his mom. There's the third person. Can't say it, can you? The fact that I, as a 10-year-old, would take responsibility from my mom. It's called parentification. When the child I... becomes the parent. Didn't even know I had a name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fucks people up real good. Yeah. And once again, we're not saying your mom is a bad person because these things happen. So I think the real irony here is that you're probably quite empathic. You're probably quite gifted at this. Because I don't know if your brother was like this. You know, if his huh. experiences were similar. But usually... No, no, I have to talk to him about it. Yeah, so I, I think that just... And this is where you don't have to blame. So this is the really tricky thing. There's, there's also like a, a certain just know-how, right? So, and we can uh, talk about that. I was going to, but then we went here. Right. How are you holding up, by the way? Dude, I'm doing good. Uh, there might be some tears coming out of my eyes but it's fine yeah i think it's fine we'll keep I'll, I'll i'll keep the jokes coming okay so we're we're not gonna go so deep all right we'll stay near all the right. surface so we can come up for air all right but but i i think it's it, it's not it's so so it's good that you recognize i don't know i mean do you did you know how angry you were because you didn't mention it all when you we were talking about it angry how angry i was when what like even today There's no, there's no quantity. There's just unexplainable. I have like just a ball of emotions. Yeah. It's all tangled up, right? And all kinds yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So, so that, that's like when we avoid and stuff, that's what happens, right? So it all gets like, it's like we have a bunch of junk mail and we just shove it into the closet and we don't know what's good. We don't know what's bad. We don't know what's, you know. And so all that stuff has to come out, dude. And like, because like, this is the thing, how can you know who you are when you take all these pieces of yourself and you like shove them in the closet? How can other people know who you are? With the closet door locked. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. It's like. It's like you can't really put yourself together. Mm hmm. You can't. It's impossible because you're taking pieces and you're walling them off, right? So, th so then, then this leads to a lot of confusion. What's wrong with me? 
It's like you're seeing everyone else walking and your foot is stuck in cement. You're like, why can't I walk? But you're blind to that. And so then you come up with all these different kinds of conclusions about yourself, which in, are in and of themselves even more damaging. Can be. And we don't know in your case, but... All right, so this is what I tend to see. I, I, I tend to see that the... See, in life, when... It's the compensations that we make for unresolved problems that really fuck us. It's not the problem itself. It's all the lengths that we go to to avoid the problem. Yeah. Because, I mean, on some level, I guess, problems can be solved. Not every problem, but a lot. But and then the, when you avoid it... Right, because it gets harder and harder to avoid the more stuff builds up. Yeah. And then you're doing all these like further bends and twists, and you're building all this rickety shielding yeah. around this core, and then... You have all these kinds of like problems with relationships and stuff like that. And I, I, I think it's not going to be as bad as you envision it is my sense. I mean, there's going to be a lot of emotion, but I, I don't think you have to blow up and yell at your mom or anything like that. I think it's just talking, just even having a conversation with her about. So when I said that, I think you envisioned something which needs to be addressed. But what I was talking you about see is it on my face. No, I mean, because you said like, okay. that's that sounds impossible. Right. So and okay. what I was envisioning was not impossible. <laughs> To right. me, anyway. I mean, but I, I was just saying, like, you can just have a conversation. What was it like growing up with grandma? Just hearing her story, seeing who she is as a person will help a lot, I think. I hope. Do you you want to know, like, you just want, like, some stories about her? No, no, no. I, I, think, I think you should hear the stories. Oh, I, yeah. I, 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 I think, should. I think that you should see her in the way that we get to see you today. Because you've talked about a lot of stuff that's negative. Yeah. I mean, do you feel weak or pathetic or like a loser? Do you feel negativity today? Dude, sometimes I just fucking hate myself. What about today? I think today I'm a little proud of myself doing this. Even though I'm sitting here anxious as fuck the entire time. I'm still pushing through it. I got tears running down my face. And I didn't want to cry on stream. But it's whatever. And people find it valuable content. So I'm pushing through to explore myself, but help other people explore themselves. And I'm proud of myself. Great. And you said sometimes you fucking hate yourself. So do you want to say more about that? It's the same thing. Like people, like, I feel like it's people giving me shit and not being able to give it back and just internalizing it. And then I feel like I feel guilty or like shameful or just like I'm the problem. And so I just hate myself. Right. So, yeah, you're the problem because you won't give it to anyone else. Yeah. Right. So when, when you ask your friend, hey, you just say their name and they're like, what? Suddenly you're the asshole for saying hello. That's that's, that's what it felt like. Right. And that's what I mean. So when you have when you don't. When the other person doesn't exist for you, you just take everything. And then that, that creates problems because then what, what your friend needs in that moment is like, wow, sounds like, is everything okay? And then you say, what can I do to help? No. Don't start with that. Say like, hey, is everything okay? And then maybe it was just a misinterpretation. Maybe there's nothing to it. Maybe y'all can move on. But I think this is a very practical skill where it seems like you get shut down very quickly from relationships. Where unless that's what things, it feels like. Yeah. And, and, and that's, but like, there, who knows what's going on? Who knows what's the, what's the correct interpretation of the situation? Right. And, and so like, and I hope it's okay. I mean, you're saying you fucking hate yourself and all this kind of stuff. And like, I hope like you can tell, I'm hope, I hope I can signal to you that I think that it is possible to make mistakes, to improve on things. And that's separate from you hating. Like, I think you're a good dude. I think you're a guy who tries really hard. And I think that you're amazing in many different ways. And I'm not just saying that because here I am pointing out this, I think you're doing wrong. The way that you interact with other people, I think is not ideal. And can be right. improved. And then all this pile of emotions that you've got, I think some of it's fair, but I think some of it is like very simple. You're just accepting all the responsibility. Right. 
And so now you're responsible for my faults and your faults, and you can't fix my faults, which means that you will never be confident in yourself because you are always accepting blame for things that are outside of your control. So common. Well, fuck you, bro. And thankfully, we play video games, so we understand, hey, fuck you, you suck at this game. And then you're like, yeah, fuck me, I suck at this game. And then we go on losing. I mean, I've actually learned, like, that's kind of like, you can't, it's like in video games, like, if I want to win a match, I can't sit there and be like, my teammates fucking suck every game. I can't do that because I'm putting it on them and I'm absolving myself of responsibility when I could be trying harder, but I understand like you're so so where you're coming both from. are equally bad. Right? And right. you're spot on. So one hundred percent my teammates' fault. Oh, this like rank, it's like force fifty percent win rate. There's some conspiracy that people are causing me to lose and like I'm going to buy a Smurf account because the reason I can't win is because my teammates are shitty. We've heard all that before. That's the opposite of what you are. But it's equally bad. Yeah. Right? So if you're, like, thinking about, like, an esports team, there's a shared responsibility. Right. In, in relationships, there is a shared responsibility. And until you start sharing that out, it's going to be hard to have them. And if you're not, if, I haven't heard this yet, but if you're not careful, you'll attract the worst kind of people, which is people that agree with you devastating i don't hear anything about a romantic relationship but this is something you got to be careful about because sometimes when there's people like you you'll find an abusive partner and it's always your fault yeah. and they think it's your fault and you think it's your fault and so y'all are there's a harmony toxic harmony it's a lot to process yeah it is it's okay you've done some heavy lifting today man yeah yeah i agree it's not about it's not about, i feel like that's the anger coming back up it's like not about being complacent fuck being complacent i'm not doing that i'm changing Good. So I think it's really healthy to notice it, right? doesn't mean that it's not, it's not wrong. It's just not 100% right. It's not about don't be, you know, because you're doing the work. Like, stop and think for a second. That's the anger saying don't be, but you're doing, you did the work. It's done. You, you, good. You're proud. It's all it. Like, we got to, it was fun. We learned a lot. We're not quite done yet, but I'm just sort of saying, like, you know, like, you can take pride and feel angry at the same time. Like, that's okay. But the anger yeah. is like, nah, nah. <laughs> Near Fred! Near! Fuck yourself! Fuck everybody else! Seriously, it's so confusing too. Like when it's like fuck everybody else and fuck yourself. Yeah. You, you just don't even know where to go. Yeah. Absolutely, man. It's, it's, like, it's like being stuck in a fucking roundabout. Like you just keep going around fucking circle. Yeah. And it's like that road over there, well, the fucking bridge is broken down, so I can't fucking go that way. This road over here, there's a bunch of, I don't know. Trees in the road or something. I don't know. Just whatever. Yeah. It's That's like what a ball it feels that like. just goes back and forth. Today, fuck everybody else. Tomorrow, fuck me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that really confuses the shit. And I was going to say really confuses the shit out of you. <laughs> I was going to say it. Jacob talks about himself in the third person. I do. I do. Yeah. Right. So, so, so that it's so interesting. So, so you're, 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 you're doing, honestly, bro, you're doing great. Like you, the neuroplasticity is like kicking in. You're like, oh, this pattern, this pattern, this pattern. And that, that's, here's the beautiful thing. So think about the roundabout. And say, yeah. you could, the, the only reason, th there's exits all over the place. It is your lack of awareness that keeps you from seeing them. Yeah. And so you have to realize, see, uh, here's the crazy thing. When you're on the roundabout, and you switch sides. You don't think you're on a roundabout. You think you're moving forward. That's the crazy thing. And then tomorrow you're moving forward. It's not even a roundabout. You're not trapped. You're on just a regular road and you keep on fucking turning around. And it feels like, I don't know, it just feels like eventually you're just going to drive straight through the fucking, like the field or whatever that's on the side of the road. Yeah, right? And that's Because you're just tired of it. Eventually, and that's like the suicidality and all that kind of stuff. And you're like, fuck it, I'm done with this road. I'm just going to head for the hills. Yeah. Right? And and that's where and that's, all... 
Yeah. That's kind of like I feel like I was starting to end up at. I had I had like four people in my life tell me I should go to therapy. So I was like, guess I should go to therapy. Good for you, man. <laughs> yeah. How has it been? I've been told people at work have told me that I seem way happier, which is very confusing. It's like, they're like, why you seem like way happier? Like, I think, you know, therapy is doing good. Like he seems happier. Like I hear them talk about me in front of me. Like they explain to other people. Um, and they explain to me that I seem happier. But then like, when I look on the inside, I'm like, am I happier? So I, I think, I think this is where there's, so when we're disconnected from ourselves, so I think the big irony is that sometimes when we, when we go into therapy, what happens, all this stuff is dormant. And so it all becomes yeah. active. And so yeah. what, what's probably happening is you're feeling a lot more, but in, it's almost like an enclosed space, like a safe space where all that stuff comes out and then you're not carrying it around the rest of the time. That's what yeah. people are really confused about. So it's very common for people to subjectively feel worse. But then there's usually something very similar to what you're experiencing, which is some amount of pride, but like there's a lot of negativity coming out. I mean, is it a good thing? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it doesn't feel bad to me. Like it feels, it feels potent. It, it feels bad that I have to ask if it's a good thing. This is self-judgment. Go for it. Judge yourself. Right? I mean, that's, your mind is going to do that. I, I don't judge you for it. Right. And now the question is, can you be empathic enough to lean into what I'm doing, or are you going to be 100% in what you're doing and judge yourself? Like, so now we're going to practice something. Oh, go ahead. Okay. I feel like I understand partially. Like, Look at what my face. You... Yeah. What do you see? Seriousness and, and honesty. What else? Probably compassion. Okay. That's what I see. Okay. You seem very compassionate. Okay. Um, and empathetic. Okay. Keep looking. What, 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 um, what do you think I'm feeling right now? I'm just thinking about it. I can't feel it. So you're not even looking. You're looking away. So, I, I, I'm trying to think about it, but yeah, like, you're trying to think. Don't think. Look, perceive. Don't cognate. Look into my eyes. Right. So, what what do you see on my face? Describe the features. Ha happiness. Yeah, it's confusing, isn't it? Yeah. So now you have to be careful. This is a very important skill. When we perceive something that does not make sense to us the mind will start to play around with it. I am happy. I'm excited. If this was anyone but you, if you were fucking watching this, you would be able to tell. And mm. people see happiness in you too. What are you doing right now? Smiling. Why? Because I feel like I learned a lot about myself and that I can perceive your happiness right now. And, and this this may be just me being in here and not empathic with you, but I think we're having fun today. Maybe not the most. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, yeah, it's, it's been great. I've been like waiting for this day and then the day came and I'm like sitting there making coffee like an hour before and I was like shaking. I was shaking like the whole first hour we were talking, <laughs> but it's been fun. And like, I don't know, it's been fun to talk to you and meet you because you seem like a really honestly past past the YouTube and Twitch and all that stuff, all your coaching stuff. You seem like a really cool guy. Um, how old are you? I don't remember how old you are. Forty one. Holy shit, you look way younger than forty one. <laughs> you look way younger than forty one. It's 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 all the Dota, man. It just keeps you young, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it does. I'm sure it's it does. The... I'm telling you, man, just let the nerd rage out. Let it out, baby, and you will be eternally youthful. <laughs> yeah, I get that, honestly. No, I mean... But yeah, I mean, it, it was just really cool to meet you. I think that it, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's weird, right? 
And so th- th- that's yeah. the thing. I'll leave you with one last thing because it sounds like we're done. And and um, and don't read too much. And you're like, oh my god, did I say the wrong? Thing? No, is that what? Don't do that. It's, okay. It's a good time to stop. So like, okay. and th- this is what life is. So like, this is the biggest lesson that most of us are not taught. It's a fucking shit show, man. It's my team throws and then their team throws and just don't give up because there's always going to be a throw. There's fluctuations. There's good days. There's bad days. There's happiness. There's fun. There's, there's jokes. There's tears. That's what life is. You don't yeah. need to avoid it. The beautiful thing is that when you stop avoiding life, the bad stuff somehow gets less bad. Because even when your teammates are throwing, you can laugh how terrible we had such a big lead how are these guys throwing how can you throw this hard but the moment that we start running away from it you know this is what life is man and i think this is what you've missed out on for whatever reason your birth your circumstances your karma your choices right some of it you control some of it you don't control stop running away go towards it in whatever doses you can you know, continue working with therapists. I think it's it's awesome. Like, I, I don't know what you were like before, but I think you have such amazing self-awareness now. You you would have been surprised. I probably had, like, a good amount of self-awareness, but I probably would have just been, like, absolutely horribly depressed. Great. I mean, not great yeah. that you would have been that way, but... You know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> great that I'm not. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I'm, I'm happy we got the version of you that we got today. Jacob, I think it's a fantastic version. Mm. You know, you seem like a really solid guy, and you know, the only thing left, I think, is we have to listen to your track. Oh boy! If you want us to, but if you don't want us to, we won't. <laughs> you can send us whatever you feel comfortable with. Maybe it's too much. I've, Maybe we can't handle what it. Is, so I have chat off, but what are they saying? They want to listen to film. I have friend? chat off too. I have no fucking idea. You think I can gonna check. pay attention to chat and do this at the same <laughs> no. time? No. No. Um, yeah, they want to listen to Femboyfriend. They want Femboyfriend. Okay, well. well give, you give the crowd what they want. They okay, want well, something, I'm... you give it to them. All right. Oh, shit. You're way too loud. Fuck. Oh, sorry. My bad. No, no, no. It's not your fault. It's my fault. Because I turned your volume up, and then I wasn't paying attention, and then... Okay, g- give me a second. So why don't you... I don't want to leak this. So you send me the Spotify link. On Discord. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then what we're going to do... Oh, my God. <laughs> what the fuck, son? <laughs> the fucking art. Yeah, it's AI, actually. I, f- I feel dirty making it because, like, Hold AI on. is kind of like... It's playing. Hold oh. on. We're not... I feel like what can be leaked from here. Okay. L- let me just show them this. Okay, so this is a single. Hold on, chat. Okay, we're gonna. We, uh, let me just see. Is there anything? Um, I'm just making sure that I'm not gonna leak anything if I show my Spotify. So, uh, actually, I guess we can just we can turn it on, and then I will just have you. Over, uh, we'll we'll see your your face. All right. Uh, okay, here we go. All right. I made so here's, I made everything. I made like the beat, the artwork. I did the vocals. Okay. So this it's all me. It's terrifying art. Okay. <laughs> I see it's explicit. Are we gonna get banned? Am I gonna ban banned for playing this? No, there's no N or F word. Okay. If that's what you're concerned about. I mean I Let's go, yeah. chat. I need that boy pussy. I need that type pussy. Real shit. If I got I it, I'll give a nice look to you. I can't. I can't. It's too much. I can't do this on stream. You can't it? No, no, I can't. I can't handle it. It's pretty explicit, man. It's, it's pretty explicit. It's too much. It's too Sorry, much. Sorry, my bad. No, I mean, I think it's <laughs> glorious. I'm going to listen to it privately. All right. But I can't. I can't. <laughs> Kids watch this, man. People's grandma. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's my, not your my fault. bad. I'm sorry. It's not your okay. fault. I didn't know. We. It's called Fan Boyfriend. What yeah. could we expect? I should have. I guess I kind of should have warned you. It's it's pretty dirty. I mean, so I think we can. You guys can just search for it on Spotify. But I do not think this <laughs> is. We have like you know, like my mom watches this sometimes. So, as much as oh, I want to support your artwork, no, it's not your fault. 
It's okay, not your okay, fault. Okay. I'm being right. transparent with you. I'm sharing responsibility. I'm saying this is a shortcoming. Please, or I know you're going to feel bad, but you get where okay. I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's great. It's on It's on Spotify. It's called Fanboy Friend. Yeah. Is it on YouTube too? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's on YouTube. So we I hope can... Grandma didn't hear that. <laughs> I, I think it's epic. <laughs> It sounds pretty fucking hype. Yeah, it is. But it's also just a bit too... Right. Too you know, much. Too much. A bit too much. But I, I think it's quite epic how we lasted like, I don't know, four seconds, five seconds. It's like, it's all we can handle. Oh, you could tell us about your childhood neglect. You could you... tell us about <laughs> suicidal at the age of 10, but fucking... But I can't rap about fanboys. Yeah, I didn't understand some of those words. I've never heard some of those words oh. in combination before. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> but, you know, so I think you win an award, Jacob, for the first person in the history of streaming who has made me bow out of something. Oh, dude, I don't know if I want that award. <laughs> You're such a cool guy. I will, like I will listen to the song for sure. All right. I just really don't think it's appropriate because we do have some people who are like under the age of 18. So like, I understand. But I understand. We should no. not. But the, the beat is an absolute banger. It, you know what's funny about it is it was like the simplest beat I ever made. I just did like little horns and then bass and then drums. I spent 10 hours on beats before. And then everybody's like, I love this beat. This beat's fire. And I'm like, dude, I spent like 30 minutes on it. Well, it's, you know, when it's... <laughs> When, when it, it's when, about fanboys, you just bring everything when out. When it comes from the heart or other places, <laughs> you know? Maybe that's where... Yeah, so, so you know, if y'all are interested in listening to this, oh, which I would say, go for chat, it. Chat was so hyped up, too. I know. I'm sorry, <laughs> chat. I'm sorry. We're not going to... We're, we're no. not going to be... I will invoke the... the What is it? The... I don't know, the the React streamer respect thing, where instead of playing something on my channel that gets thousands of listens, y'all can go listen to it yourself if you're interested in it and check it out. The beat does sound like a banger. I'm, I didn't show the cover art because, you know, kids. Yes, don't do that. And, um, yeah, but I, you know, it sounds great, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I And agree. so that, uh, yeah. Today, I, I was the shitty who was wrecked. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I, Any, I appreciate everything today. It was great. Likewise, dude. Thank you so much for sharing your story, bringing us your presence, sharing your music. I genuinely do mean that. I do appreciate it. I just don't think... I feel bad, but we just can't do it, man. We just can't do it. I will listen to it now, but... As soon as I stop streaming. All right. Don't worry about it. I just, I feel bad because I didn't think about it. I should have thought about it. I, and, and, and I know you feel bad. Don't take the response, you know, so now we can test it. Now the rubber right. hits the road. Right. I saw the explicit. I saw the cover art. I knew what the song was about. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's not like you were like, oh yeah, like here's my cover of Mary Had a Little Lamb. And then it was like the dirtiest stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I think you did your part. So I think we're now going to yeah. learn our okay. lesson. The rubber's going to meet the road. Yeah. I get to take responsibility for it. Right. Okay. You All did right. your part. I'm going to yeah. do my part. And then sometimes this happens in life. Doesn't mean we think less about you. Doesn't mean you did bad. Doesn't mean you're everything's right. golden, bro. Well, I hope uh, you don't get too many angry grandma emails. I mean, what I'm more concerned about is that I'm going to get too many excited grandma emails. <laughs> Right. Let's not assume. Okay. Let's not. Assume. No assumptions. All right. You take care, Jacob. Oh, one last thing is, um, you know, we have a trauma guide coming out soon. I, I don't know if okay. it's like people know that, but I would definitely it, this stuff about dissociation and identity and all that stuff is very uh, we go into a lot of detail around that stuff in the trauma guide. So you should definitely check it out. I think you'll probably get some complimentary copy because you're a, st a stream guest. Um, and mm. if you don't like DM me or something, but, and because a lot of the stuff that we're talking about is like, there's so much good research. There's a lot to understand and learn and, and stuff like that. So definitely check that out. Okay. And yeah. if you, 
don't get it, then let me know in some way and we'll we'll make sure you get it. Cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, we made it for people like you. <laughs> awesome. Um yeah, it was a it was a wild ride today. Um honestly, I hope we like get to talk some other time because I feel like there's still a lot more stuff that I could talk about and I hope like you'd be down for that. So personally I'm very interested. The right. challenge is that there's a lot of people. So what gotcha. we have to do is balance, you know, like, could we have another conversation? There's no fucking question we could have another conversation, dude. Like, but I, it'd be a while. I, I, I don't know. I mean, so, so I, I don't handle stream yeah. scheduling and we've got a bunch of stuff. I think the challenge that gotcha. we really face is that there's a lot of people out there and we actually want to hear from as many people as we, we can. And gotcha. precisely because of stories like yours. I hope you don't take that gotcha. as a rejection. But no. We'll just see how things go. Sometimes we'll do follow-ups with people. I think we're definitely yeah. interested in your music. I'm kind of curious about your creative <laughs> process. Um, All right. But, uh, you, know, you know, we'll see how things go. Yeah. Take care, man. Yeah, thank you. You too. Bye. Adios. All right. Chat. Uh, man, Jacob is great, but I kind of walked into that one. So there are times where, you know, chat... You guys trick me into stuff, but I mean, the beat was a banger. Let's be honest. So, you know, we just get, give the guy, look, he's, you know, check, check out. Oh, interesting. Based on this song. Okay. So check out the artist is Blue J, B-L-U-J-A-J-E-Y. And the song is Femboy Friend, all one word. And if y'all are curious, check it out, right? So the, it is it is explicit, um, but it sounds like it was definitely made with a lot of passion, and Jacob is an absolute Chad. So, you know, someone's got to make this kind of music because we need music for everybody. And uh, I will be listening to it, but I'm just not going to do it on stream. And with that, I wish y'all a happy Friday. Um, stay tuned. I think we're streaming next week too. Yeah. So we've got stream on Monday. We're doing a, um, ADH doom, ADHD doomer stream. And then we've got det detachment part two on the member side. And then, um, that's what we're doing next week. We should continue to have uploads on YouTube, uh, as usual. And then, yeah, thanks very much for